Oh, have we switched? <laughs> Yo, welcome everybody to Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Um, today we'll be doing any percent, no Wonder Mail, no QS. Um, we'll talk more about what that means in a bit, but join with me. I have two commentators. Go ahead, introduce yourselves. I'm the first yeah. one. <laughs> Am I Speedy Wolf? <laughs> sure. And I'm Shady. So, yeah. All right. So I we'll just... get right into this. Um, I'm going to do the quiz manip. Or the quiz. There's no manip right now, and hopefully we can get it. Might take us a few tries, um, but they're quick anyways. So I'll start uh, on go. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, for those unfamiliar, in this game, uh, you select your starter through a personality quiz, and not all questions that you get allow you to get the starter that you want. So what uh, what Juan's going to be looking for is uh, he has like a specific set of questions that he wants to answer specific things to to get hasty nature, which is what allows him to get skinny. Okay, let's, right. let's try again. Go style. We got docile that time. Um, at the timer can keep going. We'll just start again and go. Yeah, so in that one we got two questions that gave us points towards hasty, but not enough. Okay, we got three, four questions. This should be hasty. Yeah, easy. This we can take several tries, even with a manip. So, so what we have is not a manipulation for the entire quiz. We do have that for this game sequel, Expl the um, Explorers of Time, Darkness, and Sky games, but... Uh, for this game, we can only realistically manipulate the first question because uh, questions are generated on the fly and this game's RNG doesn't really allow uh, manipulating too many questions in a row. Yeah, I, I would estimate that the odds of getting the quiz when you like uh, answer it like uh, well would be like 25% many plus and maybe 50% or a bit more with, with the manip. Yeah, with the manip I can get it so many times in a row. Um, even with the manip, you can get a little bit unlucky. Mm -hmm. Yo, so I guess a little bit of the story about this game. We've woken up and all of a sudden we see the Cyndaquil and hey, it points out that we're skitty. Previously, we're a human turned Pokemon. And then conveniently, some Pokemon comes here looking for help that their baby, I think, or their child, um, Caterpie, got stuck in a, in a dungeon. So this is basically the tutorial dungeon. It's three floors. Not too bad. Got to do some menuing some, first. Starting off with some good RNG right here. Yep. That's what we call a stair floor. floor. Yep, and that's what we want to see in this speedrun. So this entire game is what nowadays you'd call procedurally generated. So uh, each floor has an exit and your objective is to just find the stairs. Uh, and it can, it can take like several rooms of exploration until you find them, or you can just spawn in the same room as them and then you just walk to the stairs and that's the next floor. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, you really want to spawn on a stair. Like the difference between spawning on a stair room and trying to find the stairs can be like a minute difference. Yeah, for sure. Like, you would think that uh, a game like this with uh, just uh, fully random map layouts is all about RNG and spawning next to the t stairs as, as established. Like, you can, like, immediately save a whole lot of time if you if you spawn next to the stairs. However, with the way probability works, when you when you do it, like, in a three-hour run, it, it becomes next to impossible. So, so it, always, you, you will have to... Uh, play the game and the longer the run the the more your uh, movement matters and one mm -hmm. thing that's pretty important in this game is that you can dash at a speed of one tile per frame at 60 fps in this game which makes the movement extremely skill based and uh, uh, like uh, reaction based as well because you don't know what's coming and that's like the uh, big appeal on top of like the strategic adaptation yeah, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games are like a 
pretty good mix of like high RNG but also very high skill and the RNG that they do have is mostly adaptability uh, centered around adaptability so if, if you want to be a good runner of this game what you need to be good at is uh, be able to adapt uh, to the situation that you're in uh, so it, it becomes this like a highly dynamic speedrun big fan of that of this kind of uh, stuff yeah for so sure so now after the dungeon, um, Cynical's basically brought us home and says, hey, here, you can stay here, and hey, do you want to join a team? <laughs> so yeah. we say yes. Yeah, he, he just gives us a free home for some reason. There actually is a bit of a backstory about this. Uh, when they oh. released the remake of this game, they made some uh, Japanese-only, like, uh, in, in engine, like, extra cutscenes that were... Uh, released on YouTube, and uh, th they gave a backstory for var various things, such as this uh, home, for example. Like they 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 got the home, but it was like uh, wrong type for them. They they didn't like like it at all. So they were like, I I want to give this to somebody, something like that. You can probably <laughs> go find it on YouTube. It's I didn't know that. Yeah, it's it's a fun fact. There's like a backstory for Team Mimi's as well. Who uh, we'll see in a bit. Oh, I didn't know that either. Like, there's there's another bed in there. Cynical can totally stay there, and it's like, yeah, you know, see Cynical staying outside. We've basically taken his only home. Yeah, I mean, he he does uh, sleep in his friend area, which is a uh, neat little mechanic that we will see uh, uh, approximately zero in this uh, run. I mean, there's like one instance you would want to go to a friend area in an any percent run, and that's if you forget forget uh, to. Do one thing much later, but yeah, we will not be seeing them. Yeah. Speaking of your partner, why Cyndaquil? So, like, the, the two main viable ones for this category are Squirtle and uh, Cyndaquil. Cyndaquil has Ember really early on, which is very good for the first few dungeons. Um, there's particularly like Sinister Woods and Silent Chasm. It kind of falls off later in the game. But it makes it really easy to get runs at the start. Squirtle is very good for one of the first harder dungeons, Mount Steel, because it learns Bubble. But for me, I Cyndaquil is my favorite Pokemon. So yeah, so, 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 so they are pretty even. Uh, I, uh, Cyndaquil's stats are slightly better, but uh, it, uh, as he lacks a second stab move, that's a bit of an issue. And also like. Yeah. Both of them have their advantages in early game, and with like the latest route developments, I've like switched from uh, the Cyndaquil camp to the Squirtle camp. <laughs> so, if you ask me, I'd say Squirtle is slightly better, but it, I mean, you, you both are mm. still viable. Yeah, this has been a really... oh, on. This has been a really complicated thing to figure out. We keep going back and forth on which partner is optimal. Like, all we know is that we're they were close. We don't. This is a really hard game to figure out, like what is best, because it all depends yeah. on what ultimately, what luck you ultimately end up getting in dungeons. So it's not very easy to calculate. It's not yeah, kind of stuff sure. where it's like, oh, like this Pokemon allows you to hit this range on this fight. It's more so like how much time are they going to save you on average? Yeah, and that's a lot harder yeah. to put a number on. Yeah, if you compare this to like uh, a more traditional speedrun, like. Uh, you know, maybe in a platformer you can just time like how, how long a strat takes. Well, in this game you, you need to like basically collect a statistical sample because you cannot really like like uh, predict it in any other way usually. Like maybe maybe in a main series Pokemon game it's more doable to like kind of figure out like uh, the maths behind it. Like uh, like write it out and like see it's, like as, as Biri was saying like uh, figure out how much some something saves and like you can probably know the exact odds of some something happening when when there's like a limited amount of interactions that happens in a fight but when everything you make is random in this game it becomes quickly unfeasible and uh, as a result you can only do like statistical tests which require mm -hmm. huge samples if you want to want them to show any sort of like actual significance yeah, I, I guess we didn't really talk about what we were doing there, but basically in the mail we got a, a request for a Magnemite that got stuck in a dungeon. Um, so that's where we went and saved them. We didn't really talk much about the dungeon. It's 
Very early on, nothing too special about it. It can be a little scary in the last two floors when a light kids show up. Mm -hmm. They have quick attack, which hits you two tiles away. And, you know, you can get hit by quick attack and you have two options. You can wait for the Pokemon to come up to you or go in front of it. And if you go in front, you'll get hit. If you wait, you might also get hit with quick attack. So yep. it's very easy to get two shot with quick attack. Yeah, and if you like try waiting, just might keep using it over and over if you're really unlucky. So yeah, it's like a kind of a guessing game. But yeah, yeah the, the the worst part is that uh, it's like uh, before you get your first reviver seed, which is like the item that like gives you an extra life, basically, uh, very very important in the run. So a lot of runs can just die there, even though it's not a particularly hard dungeon. But if you get uh, sort of unlucky there. You you're just dead and uh, got a reset, which makes it pretty uh, risky for a marathon. But of course, you can just re-attempt it, but that would be a big time loss. Oh. Does anybody want to talk about Link moves? Because we just linked Tackle and Leer. Yeah, for sure. So Link moves are... I'd like to say that they're like a sort of a, like a difficulty option for this game, like to make it easier. You don't mm -hmm. have to use them, they are really overpowered because they let you uh, attack multiple times per turn uh, and they also make you gain uh, 1.5 times the experience that you would normally get. Uh, so it also makes you level up faster, so this is really convenient for, for speed speedrunning. But yeah, there are not many drawbacks with linked moves. Uh, they're technically they also like drain your belly faster, so you need to eat mm -hmm. more apples, uh, which is also a mechanic in this game. Uh, and if you run out of PP, the moves uh, become delinked. So uh, yeah, there are some drawbacks, but they are definitely like optimal to use. Uh, so so if you if you decide to not use them, it's more like. Uh, Wanting to take a, right. bit of a challenge. Speaking so, of which, oh, uh, yeah. there's this very interesting link set that you uh, just did of Tackle Dan Lear. Yeah, that sounds a bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? <laughs> right. You you kind of want Lear to uh, lower the defense before hitting it with Tackle. But yeah, the idea here is that most important thing that we care about here right now and uh, since uh, the way damage calculation works in this game uh, it's like uh, summative, summative instead of multiplicative so when you have like a small drop of the defense stats the whole uh, defense stats uh, in early game is like you know five or something it gets dropped by one you do like one more damage it barely matters but uh, the XP matters especially in boss fights uh, in those ones as well, the defense might uh, matter slightly, but yeah, we're we're doing this for the XP. Yeah, so right there, yeah. we just had our first dream sequence. Those kind of, uh, as the time goes on, we'll see more and more, and it'll kind of explain what's happening, why Skiddy is even here, why did we get turned into a Pokemon. Oh, I did forget to save. I'm, I'll take a safety save here. We do have an extra Reviver Seed, but just to be safe. Yeah, this is um. <sighs> I mean, I don't think it's too likely to wipe out uh, if you're taking safety strats. But if you happen to, if you do happen to wipe out, then the punishment is really brutal because you lose. Uh, what is it? Half the items in your bag in this game as well. Yes. Yeah. So it, it like stackling, especially some of the dungeons in the later game without uh, like any items, is basically impossible <laughs> at this level. Yeah. So this like trio woke us up and said that his or their son got kidnapped by Doug Tree, or by uh, Skarmory. So we're up here to rescue them. Uh, you know what, let's take this, because I need that for a mission. And this is a pretty brutal dungeon, most things dying to hits here. Oh yeah, yeah. going back to Tackle Lear. Um, like, I guess one point about this is that Tackle Lear does help um, kill some things in two hits that otherwise would take three. It doesn't help kill as many things in one hit. Uh, I don't think. And mm -hmm. the thing about linking Leer last is if Tackle does get a kill, then um, the Leer animation is going to be particularly fast because um, different moves have different animation speeds and there's different animation speeds for whether a move hits 
which is what we call on hit, and whether I move whiffs, like misses, which is on whiff. And it turns out that the on whiff animation for Lyra is extremely fast, so we can basically get the benefit from having the um, boosted experience, the um, being able to kill some things in two turns, while also just like having a really fast animation. Yeah, for sure. Good that that's why, that's, it why, because... it's than, that's <laughs> yeah. why it's better than the king at first. Yeah, because if, if there was the, if that benefit didn't exist, like there would have be, it would still be no reason to like get the small damage boost that maybe gives you an extra kill sometimes. But yeah, yeah that's, exactly. that, that is the big time mm -hmm. save that you get by doing this as opposed to the other option. Yeah, this, this is this dungeon is where Squirtle saves a lot of time. So, yeah, uh, Cyndaquil has to two shot everything here, versus uh, Squirtle can just kill everything with Bubble. It's also uh -huh. like the big first reset point of the run. Yeah, we're not looking so good. Oh, uh, that miss, that miss is, is rough, but luckily okay. it only used a regular okay. attack. So yeah, regular attacks are uh, things you can use in this game. The enemies also use them. It's a, uh, a move That's that so everybody cool. has. It only deals like half the damage of like a normal attack with low power. Right. And... Uh, okay. okay, we got another one of those regular attacks there. And yeah, they are pretty weak and... Uh, we don't obviously use them much ourselves, but it's very, very nice when the enemies happen to use them. Right. One spent some time uh, holding B plus A right before the stairs to let turns oh. pass. Uh, in this game, you have land natural Ooh. regeneration. Oh, that was scary. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear yeah, the confusion or what happened there? Yeah, I didn't expect a confusion because I don't oh. think I've ever been confusioned here. So I just did a regular attack and got lucky. <laughs> you just got the one in eight because confusion makes you pick a random direction in this game. So as opposed to being like a one in a half, it's a one in eight in this game. God. Hit, yeah, and confusion also turns on friendly fire. So. So, you, yeah. you, you have a chance, a 1 in 8 chance to hit your partner there and just kill them, probably. Yeah, so we'll just use an Orenberry. Orenberries, I I think I learned recently, they only heal 100 health. Oh, let's get out of this room. Yeah. But Which is good enough lot. for any percent. Yeah. We won't have more than that health. Yeah, it's quite a lot more than in main series, for sure. Okay. Rocks really help in this dungeon. Unfortunately, we only had four and we used them up in the first two floors. Oh, we have some more. Rocks are, um, are a throwable item, so you can hit enemies from a distance, and they deal a fixed uh, 20 HP of damage. Yeah, yeah, so this is where you want to use a rock and have Cynical hit it once. So, outside, outside of like uh, completing this dungeon quickly, we have uh, an objective here to like collect as m many uh, uh, items to sell and as much money as possible. And uh, the best items to sell in here are those blue orbs. Normally they like, I mean, they are powerful in themselves, but they can also be sold for uh, uh, a lot of money. The orbs like function as like a single use move with a special effect, for example, like freezing every enemy in the room. Yeah, we didn't get a single orb. It's a bit unfortunate. Yeah. But we did pick up a, quite a bit of money. Yeah. There and the reason being is later um, one's going to check the shop to uh, fish for certain TMs to teach Skitty. Yep. Mm -hmm. The other Never kinds of items. Fight, that, yeah, by the way. yeah. Uh, it's just a Skarmory. It seems not too bad. Our strat here will be throw rocks twice and then hit it with tackle. Yep. If you're uh, not at full health, you might want to attract, but otherwise, it's mm -hmm. pretty free. Okay, we're at full health, so we'll be fine. So it, this should be it good. Can do about this. 30 damage, I think, with Peck. 33. It there could maybe crit you, I'm sure, but yeah. Uh, I haven't had that happen to me yet, thankfully. Yeah. But yeah, what I was gonna say that was that uh, there are also other items that you wanna pick up, but those are mostly just to have in case they uh, appear in the missions. Uh, we right. didn't think, uh, talk about this yet, but uh, you have to like uh, complete uh, a certain number of uh, randomly ge generated missions in this game, and they have like different clear conditions. Sometimes you just have to find the client on a specific floor, but sometimes you need to have an item. So um, there's two types of them. One is to bring the item to a client, which is like strictly worse than finding the client. But another one is just having the item when you clear the dungeon. Uh, that saves a lot of time because you don't need to find the client. In fact, if it's at the end of the dungeon, you don't even need to go to the floor because the game lets mm -hmm. you leave earlier. Yeah, we didn't talk about it, but we did have that case come up with our first set of missions we went that to uh, Tiny Woods. We only went to floor two, but we did have a floor three mission, which was to find an Oranberry. 
But since we had the Orin Berry, we can just leave on floor two, and that still counts as completing the mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more of those missions you have, the better. They definitely save the most time. So here, the Magnemites helped us save Diglett. Um, now they're wanting, or I think we've asked them if they want to join our team, but unfortunately we don't have their friend area. So they, yeah. they refuse. And this is where you, you learn about friend areas. Yeah, so those are used to actually like recruit new members to the team. But of course, as this is a Pokemon speedrun, getting more than the uh, minimum number of uh, uh, team members is basically time loss. So we don't want that. Yeah, there is one Pokemon we'll want later on that we hope will join our team. But for the most part, we don't want any Pokemon to join our team. This is true. There, there is an exception to this. I believe the only PMD speedrun outside of Recruit Them All um, categories where we switch main is uh, the remake to this game, Rescue Team DX. Yeah, yeah, the remake to this game is really interesting. It has the same story, but the gameplay is completely different on like a mm -hmm. technical level at the speedrun level. Like like at a casual level, it might seem the same, but but the speedrun is completely different as, as that game uh, lets you actually uh, switch your controlled uh, oh, leader. Sorry. All oh, right, we, we just yep. got one of the TLs we're looking for. But yeah, uh, that game lets you switch your leader, which uh, uh, lets you split up with your uh, team. They also reveal the map, so you can just have everybody split up on their own. And I kind of jokingly call it an RTS game because you're like taking care of your like entire entire like team around the entire map and like you have to switch control and such you, you find mm -hmm. some somebody finds the stairs you go into the stairs and you have to make sure that uh, somebody doesn't die at the other side of the map it's it's really interesting but it's quite quite a different speed run to this yeah it's quite unique for sure yeah this one was more traditional right so we we did buy a tm there facade there's three TMs we could want there. The best one is Frustration. Um, the next one is kind of a toss-up between Secret Power and Facade. I prefer Facade slightly more because it has more power points, but it's slightly less accurate. But yeah. I think it's only like a 4% difference maybe. But we yeah, did find both oh, Secret Power. Uh, cool, right, yeah. right. I think Facade has more base power as well, but yeah. Ah. The absolute best TM that you could find is Frustration. That also costs the most amount of money and you can't always afford it, but if you do, that is a move that deals a fixed amount of damage depending on your IQ. Uh, and you always start the game at either 0 or 1 IQ, I don't remember, um, which will make it deal 45 HP of damage, which is the maximum. Um, that is a lot of damage for this part of the game. It, it is enough to one-shot most enemies. Yeah, for the first yeah. hour, Frost will mostly carry you through it on its own. Like, you you might want to link, uh, or you will want to link uh, your second move there, but it it will uh, eventually. But it will then take care of everything. Mm -hmm. Skitty at the start of the game isn't too strong. It only has one move, like tackle, and it doesn't yeah. take a it doesn't get a second attacking move until level fifteen. So getting a TM um, early on, like, will link it together with tackle and that way we'll do two hits of damage or two attacking moves to kill most things versus for us you you would only need one attacking move so facade and secret power are kind of like a budget version of frustration mm -hmm. but they're still really really good yeah i forget if you were talking about why we use skitty but it's basically there's no contest to skitty even though it's a really bad uh, pick for the early game but yeah that is the uh level 50 move that you get the double slap that is uh what makes kitty uh the most broken starter mm -hmm. in this game by far in addition to that you also get attract which is like the most reliable way to deal with boss fights typically the boss fights in this game can be quite frustrating like people of, often complain about getting stuck in this if you don't grind for xp you will just get one shot from the bosses if you get bad rng as in that they use their moves and not just use the regular attack yeah um, and uh, yeah you cannot really use there are not many status like items in this game you cannot use orbs in boss fights if you use like a sleep seed they will wake up in one turn it's it's pretty bad honestly but the track just lets us like skip through all of that 
so we don't uh, need to worry about getting lucky or or uh, having to grind experience. Right. Of course, if anybody can learn a track, then you can get it in the shop, but ha having it by default is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so now, to advance the story, we need to do three missions. Um, and in this dungeon, well, like three can spawn, and it's the fastest dungeon we can do where you can get three missions out of the way. Um, but here is a deliver item, a deliver mission. I think it wanted an apple. It's not too bad. It's like the most common item in here. The fun thing about these dungeons is that you're typically gonna look at your minimap a lot to see if there's the client in the room. Um, the problem mm -hmm. is they, um, the, the client uses a yellow dot to indicate the fact that it's an ally. And uh, with this color palette, it's easily missable. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is very difficult to see. You like have to kind of de develop some uh, feel feel for it. Like the way I usually do it is, I try to look for movement in in the uh, background, basically, because it's easier to see when something is slightly moving than a static yellow on yellow. So right. So when I'm moving around, I'm like trying to see if anything is moving moving in the map, and that way I can usually spot them, even if it's like really hard to see. That makes sense. Yeah. So fifth floor, this is our last floor. Oh, there he is. Another deliver. Yeah, three Voltorbs as well. <laughs> this one wanted an orange berry, so that's why we picked an extra one up. So they give us rewards. What we really want to see here is kind of reviver seeds. My max elixirs are good. Rocks can be good in the beginning. Okay, there's rocks and a rev, so that's good. Money is probably the fastest option, but I'd rather have reviver seeds than money. The more reviver seeds we have, the more deaths we have and just, or we can afford, and the higher the chance, higher chance the run will finish. Yeah, in this category, we don't care about that, uh, like, at all. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how many frames you lose per reward. It's not, not a consideration when, when there's a lot more variance from other things. Right. I don't mind seeing rocks because I do have a stun seed and we're going to be able to show off a, a cool strat made or found by Shady. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you have the setup for it? We have the stun seed. We do. Let's go. If you have enough rocks, <laughs> then we'll get to show it oh, off. I don't yeah. know if I've seen the strat. Are you not? It's the. Oh, wait. Do you, you, do you mean the Moltres strat? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's not too often that you can do it, but I did get it in my PB, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. I I guess we don't have a Monster House Orb. I'm going to check the shop, because we probably get Yeah, that them. is quite important if you want to uh, reliably be able to finish the late game. Nope. We'll check again later. But we should probably toss some items here. I guess you don't really have to toss much. Oh yeah, we didn't really mention it, but in this game you have 16 item slots in your inventory, which is very little for mm -hmm. everything that you might want to carry. I think it's 20. It's like 10 per oh, yeah, page. Oh, 10 per page, right. You're right, you're right. Yeah, it's 8 per page in the sequel, but they actually have larger pages in this one at least. And on top of that, your held items are not counted for the space, but, but they are uh, separately held on the Pokémon. This is a gross layout. <laughs> you don't really see these big rooms in Tiny Woods. Yeah, so that is what we call a merged room, mm -hmm. like in the layout generator uh, algorithm. It sometimes, like it places the rooms in like this grid pattern that you can probably see. Sometimes it merges two cells of the grid together, and then you, then you get those huge rooms. Yeah, and in the late game, you can get rooms or floors where it's just one giant room. We won't yeah, that be is getting in, any of those in any That percent. is in post game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there there's you like are. a whole science behind the dungeon generation that can actually help for uh, runs here and there and determining what hallways might be more likely to lead or so uh, this to is... a room and not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is what we pretty much, it's not quite, but we pretty much uh, can call this a linear layout, at least the fashion we explored it. Uh, those are uh, 
the most inconvenient type when you like have to go from one end to the other and there's no faster path than just taking a zigzag through the entire floor. Mm -hmm. We didn't get many rocks there. I may go out of my way just to pick up rocks so we can see the strat anyways. Hopefully we can get enough. Yeah, for sure. You need like at least 20. Yeah. So I guess we didn't talk about this last time, but or during the cutscene, but Team Meanies came and stole items from our mission box. We'll see them again here. Caterpie, the same Caterpie we saved, says their friend is our friend needs help as well. And Team Meanies, Gengar Ekans, and Metachan heard and said, you know what, we'll rescue them. And Caterpie says, hey, I don't have any money. But, you know, don't worry, you can just force slavery and join us, I guess. Sound logic. Yeah. So now Caterpie asks us for our help, so we're racing to save Metapod. But quickly before that, we have some stuff to do. So let's check shop again. There's a couple orbs we're looking for, not getting lucky. This is where we're going to teach the TM we bought earlier. Yeah, getting us a very important uh, second attacking move. Like, uh, mitigating one of the bigger Wait. weaknesses. Uh, that is what not is correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tail with attract. That would be an interesting link set. <laughs> so yeah, now that, we have, feel right. now that we have a second attacking mode, Skitty can actually kill enemies in one turn, which is a big time save. Not I need it. Accept these now, but we'll do it. Yeah, so we're currently we're preparing the missions for like late game. We've already... There's not gonna be any of those missions for a long while. Right, and you want to get missions now because you want missions mm -hmm. for the earlier dungeons since they're usually on, like, easier to get to floors. Yeah, And the chance sure. of you... Like, as soon as you have more dungeons open, the chance of you getting a mission in, let's say, Tiny Woods is gonna go down. Um, this way. This is inconvenient. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that you can just BA if you stand like that because that activates the pseudo voodoo. <laughs> right. Good, good you don't shot. have, to, oh, you don't have yeah. to throw a rock. I was thinking about. The, oh, um, wait, I'm gonna kill this Oddish now. Uh, Oddish is not my favorite Pokemon in this game. <laughs> Oddish yeah. use sweet scent. Oddish use sweet scent. Oddish use sweet scent. <laughs> Thankfully, that one did not use sweet scent. Yeah, so one of the gimmicks in this dungeon is that a lot of the Pokemon are stationary, such as the Sudowoodo. They actually start following you if you, like, uh, walk next to them. But but then we also have, like, the cocoons, which, like, don't, uh, don't move at all. So that kind of makes this a fun dungeon to play, because there will be less, like, encounters that you have to stop for, and it's more about the movement, at least for the earlier floors. The spawn table does change a bit towards the end, so it's less of that, but... Yeah, usually the early floors of this can go by pretty quickly. Yeah, so Cynical now has Ember. That mean, that's good enough to one-shot every Pokémon in this dungeon, basically. Um, I guess not all of them. Um, okay, Scanner Orb is Ooh, nice. Yeah, that is a good uh, item for later. Yeah, we did pick up a Warp Orb, which is what we need. That, that orb will warp every Pokémon in the room away. And that'll be very useful when you spawn in monster houses. Yeah. The Pokemon. <laughs> ah, this is annoying. Sanflora, yeah, use these... growth. Sunflora, use growth. Yeah, if you're just in range, it'll just use growth. And if you wait for it, it'll just keep using it sometimes. Um, this is a weird one. Turn this way. Yeah, this, you, this dungeon definitely has a lot of Pokemon that just don't move. I think it's the only one, right? Otherwise, like, a po Pokemon are always moving if they're not asleep. But th these early floors don't have anything scary. There you see yellow text that's warning us that our Link moves or are going to de-Link. We have one more use, and then it says, hey, if you use them one more time, they're going to de-link. So this is where we're probably going to want to use a max elixir. 
Yeah, that's kind of the one thing about having a uh, facade or secret power. Um, like, it, it, they're helping a ton here. Uh, a lot of these fights are going down in one turn that would otherwise take several. But you probably want a lot of max elixirs to compensate because uh, they don't have that many PPs. And uh, y y the chances of going through a dungeon without needing a max elixir are, are actually not that high. Yeah. yeah. Frustration is a lot better because... Uh... It lets you one-shot them, you don't even need linked moves, which, uh, well, you do lose out on the XP, but it doesn't matter as much in early game, but you get a lot of time save from less animations, and it also just has more PP, so you're, you're not gonna run out too, too often. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, finally getting lucky. As I say, this dungeon hasn't been yeah. very kind to us, but that immediately get some stair floors. Okay, so that is a... Uh, funny room. This is like a grid that is like uh, two columns, four rows, and uh, this means that the uh, uh, columns are quite far apart, and then it decided to create a merged room between those columns. So that's why we got that kind of huge <laughs> horizontal room there. Yeah. Let's some stack some rocks. Oh, did, that's the wrong one. <laughs> no, wait, why am I doing that? No. Place. Yeah. You know what? Let's show off uh, some dumb strats here. <laughs> Alright, oh. so we're going for blaze strats. So we're using the blast seed intentionally on our partner to get it to blaze. Which uh, deals double damage in this game. Which is quite significant. Mm -hmm. One problem with using Blaze here is that you will not be using linked moves, which means that you'll be missing out on some of the boosted experience, but it's not too significant on the uh, uh, oh. other. Oh, Syndical was also holding a Blast Seed. Well, no. I think this is fine. Yeah, he just threw it. It's fine. It's gonna keep doing 100 damage. Oh, we got the Curse from Gengar, which is uh, good because it costs its HP a lot. Yeah, I couldn't go for the safety hit on Ekans. Sometimes, Ember, Ember there is a range on Ekans. Can you Three. hit? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Three damage kill. Let's go. Yeah, so with, with Ember and Blaze, you can one-shot Medichan, guaranteed, and Ekans, it's like a favorable range. Usually you want to attract Gengar there. But since we missed, I was just like, okay, we'll just attack it. Yeah. I mean, if you don't attract Gengar, there's the chance that it goes for Curse and saves you time, but it also could just put you to sleep with Hypnosis, which is really, really bad of and kind of might lead lead the fight to quickly go off rails and lose a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gengar right there gives you the most XP, so you want to make sure you hit at least that one with the linked moves. I think next is like Ekans, but if you don't hit it with a linked move, you may maybe lose like 90 XP, which is not too much. But yeah, I don't think Blaze really saved the time there. Especially yeah, with Cynical. To set up. Mm -hmm. It's really nice when it works, because then you kind of just one hit Gengar, or, or two hit, I guess, since you have to throw one rock. Or a tackle. Yeah, so earlier there was a cutscene where Jumpluff was talking to Skarmory, trying to get Skarmory, or not Skarmory, um, what's his name? Nuzleaf and Shiftry, Shiftry's team, to mm -hmm. rescue their friend. Um, and now we're hearing that Shiftry never came back, and it's been like three days. So, he's asking us for our help. So one last day, we have to go check the mission boards. Gonna check the shop again. Um, still no orbs. I guess since this will be the last time we're coming here, uh, nothing good in the shop either. <laughs> hmm. Well, I do want to link moves though. Might be able to spend that money later. Yeah. Okay, so we do have to come back because we. Yeah, only I think got we got unlucky mission. there. Yeah. At least we got a near mission. But... 
Yeah, that is one of the uh, RNG uh, things uh, that are like outside of the dungeons. Like, how many yeah. times do you have to go to the mission board? Yeah, we wanted to see two Tiny Woods missions there, but we only saw one. So that means we're all to take an extra trip into town to look at it after. Yeah. There is a way to make it slightly more likely to spawn by uh, filling out uh, the possible mission slots in Mount Steel by taking them off the board. Meaning that uh, the game cannot generate a mission for Mount Steel, which mm -hmm. means that the odds for one being in Tiny Woods is higher. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here we find out that there's a monster that lives here, and Cyndaquil Midi is like, ah, oh, my tummy hurts, and we join him and say, ah, oh, my tummy hurts as well. I think that's yeah, the fastest that's, text. Yeah, that is fast. Not in the remake, though. Like, oh, really? Re remake has uh, faster text and slower animations, which turns some of these uh, dialogue choices around. So if something has a lot of text, but maybe not as many animations, then it's probably faster in the remake, even though it's slower here. Yeah, yeah so now they... Cynical has Ember Tackle, and that's good enough to one-shot everything here. Yeah, they learned from the third installment in the series, Gates to Infinity, where they dropped the game to 30 FPS without increasing the text speed, so it became extremely slow in English. <laughs> I guess they didn't catch it in Japanese because because it's not that bad in Japanese uh, with the characters being like syllables in that that language. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, it is really bad. It is like a seven and a half hour run. What uh, still gets me to this day about Gates is that according to the cutting room floor, there are unused text strings left in the game that seem to indicate um, that at some point they were gonna have a setting to change the text speed. Really? Oh no. Uh. Anyway, uh, yeah, they, they, they fixed that in, in the uh, next installment in Super and they also had the same in Rescue Team DX where, where you can actually uh, hold uh, the B button, which is used to, like, by the way, automatically advance the text in this game without needing to mash. But in, in those newer games, it also makes the text go faster. Mm -hmm. yeah, this game's pretty nice, where you can just hold B and you'll frame perfect mash. Yeah, it is um... not that uh, bad to run these games, even though they have a lot of cutscenes. This one in particular doesn't even have that many cutscenes. It's like what, uh, an hour of cutscenes in, in, in like a three hour, two and a half hour run, depending on your level. Yeah, a little over an hour of cutscenes, which is less than 50%. Mm. Um, yeah, so you're gonna be playing the game most of the time, and whenever you're waiting, it's kind of nice, because you, you, you're, it can be kind of like heavy on the hands, with like, you kind of have unlimited actions per second, you can play, do essentially when, when, when you can dash one tile per frame. So get, getting those breaks between dungeons is actually quite nice, especially since you don't have to mesh. Okay, so tutorial yep. text there. Oh, my link moves came apart. Ooh, I guess I wasn't paying so... attention. We can just link, relink them in town. Yeah, we're going yeah. back to town, so it's for, fine. For this part of the game, especially since it's one of the last floors of the dungeon, it's fine. Um, it'll become a problem later because we'll have stretches of the game where you have to play multiple dungeons in a row without having access to town. So Luckily, luckily, at least in this game, you can usually find the item link box that lets you still fix the situation yeah. if you're sufficiently lucky. Okay. I don't. Can link box spawn in this dungeon? Nope, it is only starting in Mount Thunder. Mm -hmm. DMs and links, link boxes start spawning in Mount Thunder. Equipment starts spawning in this dungeon. Uh, looks like we haven't found any so far, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, equipment uh, such as power band and oh. special band. Oh, speaking of that, we were looking for. Ooh. Yeah, they they significantly boost your stats the respective stats and pretty much what we want. You can like technically equip some usable items of the partner to let the AI use it, but we don't really use oh. that apart from one of the traps that we've been talking about. So mostly we we just want this passive held item equipment that boosts our stats. 
There are some other interesting items that we can find towards the uh, late game. Oof. Accuracy debuffs are rough. <laughs> At least yeah. in this game, they are not as rough as in the sequel, where they, for some reason, like, you decided to implement two accuracy checks, and then if you get a debuff, then it debuffs both of those checks, so the odds of hitting through both checks are like actually really small. It's like if you're like minus two accuracy, you're already at 50% accuracy. Overall, in this game, it's not quite as bad. Yeah, which also makes illusion boosts uh, more uh, more powerful, as evidenced by the fact that um, uh, there are some dungeons with sandstorm weather condition and enemies that have sand veil. Those are like impossible to hit. Yeah, yep. yeah. that is quite the pain in those games. Yeah, so since our moves delinked, we didn't have access to facade anymore. And you, you kind of saw how I, I kind of let Syndical kill everything. That's kind of mm. what you normally do if you don't get a TM. It yeah. is a little bit slower because you kind of have to let Syndical take a hit. Yeah, one of the one of the things I enjoy about like uh, these games is like the uh, science and the routing process. So I, I was like the one who like uh, more more like coined the Syndical strategies that was precisely to make those dungeons much better, and it it worked out, but uh, again, once the TMs became became more of the meta, it become, became a little redundant, which is why I personally switched to Squirtle. Mm -hmm. There is, of course, still an unknown factor, uh, or an unknown... Um, like, I think that we don't know how much it actually affects. Uh, we know that different partners have different dialogue variations. Uh, right, so... that's... Yeah, we finally uh, did the science of that for the sequel, but we don't really know about this game yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically learned Z Zapdos is in Mount Thunder, so that's where we're headed next. We do have to relink our moves, and we need to go check for the mission board again. So it's not the worst that our moves got delinked. Just a little bit of time. Oh, a luminous orb, okay. Yeah, I think that menu is like 10 seconds if you do it quickly while passing by. All right. <laughs> luminous ah. orb mission. Yeah, that is a really rare item to find in this uh, run. It like, can only spawn in Sinister Woods. It's a good item, it reveals the map of the entire floor, but you won't be seeing that quite often. Right. <laughs> we did get it as a mission requirement. <laughs> Obviously, we're not doing that, but... I think I've only gotten one Luminous Orb ever running this game. So. Yeah, that would be a painful mission to complete. Like, the no, the missions are not created equal. You need to know what you want to do. Alright, so Mount Thunder... Would uh, it be fair to call this place one of the more difficult um, dungeons in the early game? Yeah, so I'd say that this is usually quite a big reset point. It's not that bad with with a TM and some elixirs, but if you didn't get a TM, you really have to get lucky here if you want to get out of here on a good pace. Yeah, yeah, because enemies start to get like bulkier and stronger. Uh, so like yeah. if you don't have TMs, it's hard to kill stuff in like one hit or even two hits. Yeah, this is where um, frustration stops one hitting the enemy. So yeah. Yeah, this is where you'd link a second move after frustration, and then there's also uh, these layouts that we're gonna see starting from seven F. Um, they're well, the position of the stairs and exactly the size of the rooms is still random, but they're a bit special in that they, they don't necessarily spawn in this great like layout. Um, 7F and um, 9F, I believe, uh, they are gonna all have rooms in the middle. So we're gonna have we're gonna see like a four by two rectangle of rooms, and then the outside is all gonna be corridors. Meanwhile, it's flipped for 8F and 10F, where there's gonna be a ring of ten rooms and then hallways all in the middle. So. Those are actually um, harder to traverse um, because, well, at least the, the ring formation, they might not have great connectivity. You might be forced to go back to the center uh, every time you want to explore a new room. Not necessarily, but often. And then when it comes to the rooms in the middle, um, some rooms might be, might be connected, but you might have to go outside uh, yeah. or have an outer layer and then back inside. Yeah, so this game has these things, these things called like, the extra hallways, which which makes the game like random, randomly generate extra extra hallways, as the name suggests, uh, which are not like uh, the ones that the game makes 
guarantees to be connected. Right. So, 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 so again, you're because the uh, because those layouts SPD was talking about are like built to be kind of annoying to navigate. We're really hoping for those extra hallways to give mm -hmm. give, uh, give us some shortcuts. Oh. But yeah, <laughs> we can also <laughs> just spawn next to the stairs. That also works. Yeah, so why, yeah. Did, why don't you just spawn next to the stairs? Has anybody yeah. thought of that? Yeah, so here we got a quite nice extra hallway connecting us. Yeah, so because this layout, all the rooms are in the center, I know which pass will more likely lead me to the stairs. So yeah, this one has like no guaranteed hallways between the rooms, except for the web in the middle, which is what we're having to go through right now. Uh, so this makes us spend quite a lot of turns, which makes us quite a, quite a lot of encounters in days if, if we don't get lucky. Yeah. Uh, oh. And we got time. like decently lucky. We, one of the nice feelings in this game is when you uh, uh, run away from enemies uh, with good and quick movement, and then you find the stairs and you like see all the fights on the screen that you were able to avoid. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, like like this, for example, you can see all these enemies following. We're we're like hoping hoping that we don't have to fight them, but it's it's not looking too good right now because we missed the movement. Uh, once we get this Gligar out of the way, it looks like we might be able to keep some of these encounters here. The Syndical should get unparalyzed next turn. And yep, yeah, we still skip two fights there. Yeah, running away is almost always faster. Yeah, it's just it, it, annoying if you're like spending a lot of time to like uh, run away and then then you have to fight them anyway once you run into a dead end. <laughs> Yeah, because usually you want to be careful not to waste any turns and let them yeah. get through for you. Yeah, for sure. Like ab about like moving quickly in this game, there's definitely a trade-off between accuracy and speed. Like you you cannot possibly react correctly to s some things. Like once you know the layout generation enough, you can like tr start making predicted movements without actually seeing the map saving on, on like the human reaction time but Wait, of ah. course there are exceptions like for example the room is a dead end and now you made a uh, bad move and for, for that reason if you have something behind you you usually don't want to make those predicted moves and you just want to take a sm small pause to like look at what you actually have but yeah another instance of the blaze strats being here you can see the uh, exclamation point in the cutscene yeah funny. i think the setup maybe lost me time because i fight an extra thing Blast Seeds do 45 damage, and Cynical had exactly 44 health, so I needed to let it regen a little bit of health. Interesting. So here's where we're going to see uh, Skitty's attraction. So yeah, this, this should be really nice for the Zapdos fight, because we have the power band. Yeah, we got a miss, <laughs> but, but, but still, lead moves with Skitty and the Tail Whip uh, attract also. Ah, uh, I didn't react in okay. time with that miss. Now we yeah, might not okay. kill. We got a crit though, which oh. is odd. Yeah, and Ember crit with Blaze. That's huge damage. All right. Yeah, and so you saw 92 damage. is quite a lot. We didn't yeah. get. We didn't have a special band. If you have a special band with the crit, you can get over 100. Yeah. But yeah, Blaze. Like I think if you don't have Blaze and no special band, your Ember usually does about like 30. 30 to 40. So like, being in Blaze just does so much more. Okay, now we've now we've rescued Shiftery. I forget why. Where do we find out why we have to go to Great Canyon? I don't remember. Ah, oh, I guess it is, it here where we reveal that we are humans to them, and probably Alakazam tells us to go talk to Zatu in Great yeah. Canyon. Yeah, yeah, Zatu might know something. So that is why we're going there, trying to solve the mystery of turning into that Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Zatu is this freak that just stares at the sun the entire day? Yeah, it sounds very healthy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Zatu has eyes anymore. <laughs> They're just like pictures of eyes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Greg Canyon should be where Skitty levels up to level 15, which is where she learns Double Slap, and that's... One of the more powerful moves she has, and like the main reason why uh, Ski is even chosen in the first place. Yep. So multi-hit moves are extremely powerful in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, because the way they balance them is they deal about the same amount of damage as a regular attack, but 
um, they hit multiple times and they have less accuracy than a normal attack, typically. Um, but it's still However, just enough to be able to hit, like, what, on average twice every time you yeah. use... The, the accuracy isn't even that bad in this game. It's bad in Sky, but in this game it's actually pretty good. 70% yes. for double slap per hit. It's, it's, it's not bad when you have 2 to 5 times. And unlike like, the multi-hit modes in like later PMDs and like main series as well, where it's like often more likely to hit uh, the lower number of hits, this game is actually like an... Uh, Uniform. It's a uniform distribution for like two between two and five, so it's as likely to hit two times as it is to hit five times. So yeah, we got a, we got the special band now, so we we got both right. equipment that we need. That is good. And here's double slap. Yeah, we're getting rid of our facade. It has served its purpose. Saved us a bunch of time. Yeah, there are some like. Other moves we could use if we had more than four moves, but so it's a bit of a problem in this game as well. But but like for example, Skitty would learn Sing, which is like attract but faster. You could use it to escape encounters and such. Mm -hmm. There have been like attempts to use it, but it's it's rough because it doesn't last as long, especially in the boss fights. Like it's not very viable for um, the boss fights. You gotta go back this way. So you have to use the slower attract. Okay, yeah, well, Cyndaquil's lost. Oh, there he is. In this game, if the partner loses track of you, it's kind of... It's gonna wander off it's on its own. It was like a good clip of Karul when he did his ESA run of this. Oh, he right. Got, <laughs> he, he got double slap That's and was one. like, now we have the most broken move in the game. Proceeds to miss all his double slaps and then die. Yeah, that is that is one of the best PMD clips. I think I saw that live even, that was fun. Yeah, same, I was in the audience for that one. Yeah, I was watching watching it on Twitch, but I mean live in that sense. Yeah, like, Double Slap can hit up to five times, but that also means it can miss up to five times. That is true. It is quite unlikely for it to miss five times, but it does happen occasionally. Yeah, I've only had it once miss tackle and five double slaps. Okay, um, I'll do this in case I miss one. It's good to have Syndical as a backup. Okay, a little rough. We may lose the seed here. Okay, still alive. And a little bit of health. Yeah, bit of a region on the stairs. Passing turns. Yeah, you can pass turns very quickly if there's no other, like, Pokemon. Um, yeah, go. it goes with the same speed as dashing, with one one uh, turn per frame getting passed if nothing is happening on screen. But as soon as somebody steps on screen, you start seeing walking animation. No, no, that is, what call. is, three misses in a row? Oh, it's still alive. Wow. Yeah, yeah, missed Ember well, three times in a row. All right, that is uh, not quite uh, likely. In fact, uh, that is a one in a thousand because it's uh, <laughs> ten percent to miss. So, yeah, there's. I've been really lucky this run, somehow surviving a lot of things with like yeah, this, one or two HP. It's kind of cool that we didn't die though. Okay, come on. Oh, this yeah. Heracross keeps stepping. Oh, we're at double slaps. I guess it doesn't help that you got double slap very early into Great Canyon. Yeah. Training. Yeah, usually you will kind of want double slap towards the end. You definitely want double slap before leaving this dungeon, though. Yeah, because um, as soon as we leave, uh, we want to link Double Slap with uh, Taco. And yeah. after we leave, we begin what's called the uh, Fugitive Sequence, which is where you essentially don't have access to 
uh, to gulp in for several dungeons in a row. Uh, and you could use the link box if you have to happen to find one, but it's not guaranteed to be able to find one. So if you don't have double stuff at the time you exit this dungeon, you might be looking to have an, uh, an unlinked move set on Skitty for quite some time. Oh, speaking of which, yeah. It was something fuck. <laughs> Great timing. Yeah, they are important. Just, at least in the scroll route, I haven't checked out since I could but in the scroll route, uh, it's important to have some link boxes, like for example, when you learn bite later on. Okay, thankfully the stairs were this way. Yeah, I guess for this route, it's like mainly a backup, and maybe you might use it in Magma Cavern later. You do get quick attack at some point, but you could link it in town. I think you get it earlier, but actually not. You might. I, I think you get quick attack later, don't you? I don't know. Wait, can, can, we just, in the cool. can we just mention the fact that this is the canonically blind duo? Yeah, this is this is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it. This, these uh, these eye. Um, these eyes have a particular name that I forget. Oh, right, right. I, uh, I haven't heard that name in such a long time. I mean, they also miss a bunch, so I feel like they are always blind anyways, which makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it checks out. Anyway, we're not tickling Satu, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, attacking is a lot faster. If you hit tickle there, and like that's just me mashing A, the top option, you lose 20 seconds. I've never done that, never. Yeah, yeah, absolutely never. <laughs> Neither? I've probably done it like a couple of times, honestly, but... <laughs> I definitely have done it. Sometimes back-to-back -back runs. Yeah, I've seen quite a lot of those. <laughs> hardest part of this run right here is remembering which prompts to say where. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of uh, new runners to this game find the prompts kind of daunting in this game because the cursor starts on some random position and it changes and it's yeah. all weird. I personally, I guess I got started with Rescue Team DX, so when I moved to this game it was mostly the same, so I never found it too difficult. Mm. This is where we learned that us being human is kind of linked to all the disasters and earthquakes happening in this world. And Gengar learns this as well. Yeah, Gengar was like eavesdropping us, so... No. So this is kind of just like a rest day. This is more prolonging the story. Or this, this is where we'll learn more about the story, at least. So yeah, this is another instance where you get some very funny dialogue if you keep mashing A. Yeah, it's gonna, there's gonna be a penny prayer that comes and... Yeah, you're gonna ask them if, if 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 you want them to take you to space or some, some something like that. So, Elipper yeah. does really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then then he responds <laughs> like no way and flies away or something like that. So, <laughs> so so yeah, you don't want to be mashing either. I think I did that as a kid, but I I haven't done that once yet since coming back to this game. That's funny. I think this is telling you, this is where you learn about the Nine Tails legend, where some human, I think, abandoned Nine Tails. And so now that human is cursed. You get a slight frame saver there by uh, hugging the left wall before talking to Wish Cash, because the cutscene takes you slightly to the left, so if you're closer to the left, then you. Save a couple frames. It's there's a fruit we want to, to do, so might as well go for it. Yeah, there's a mm. there's a lot of subtle optimizations here that like cost basically nothing to attempt, but will save you some frames here and there. Like even exiting town, I believe it's uh, faster to hold down left, so that you're already mm -hmm. facing down left. Since the game tries to turn you back to the right, it saves a rotation, which saves four frames. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly insignificant time saves in, in a run like this, so you don't really need to worry about not knowing them, but once you play this game enough, you get like bored eventually, and you're like, might as well learn <laughs> this, and maybe maybe save one second of like, uh, every fifth run or something like that. Yeah, it's also like, I guess more so like these are free time saves to go for, so it's just Yeah, like... for, for sure, like, once, once you like have the time to like, and like, 
you, you like kind of want to le learn those extra things like you you might as well learn them and once you know them you always go uh, for them but yeah okay. our shops are not being kind to us didn't get an extra orb or reviver seeds we, we did never talk about like this time save where our top screen is our stats Ooh. usually by default it is the map um, I think you know more about this SPD. Yeah, this is a fun one. By default, um, there are two top screen configurations. This is a DS game, so you have a bottom screen, which is the one uh, where most of the gameplay is happening, and then you have the top screen. Um, by default, it will display the world map, so where you are, you know, in town or whatever. Um, but you can go into the options and change it to the team stats, uh, and the team stats reduces loading time. Anytime you uh, load a new scene, for some reason, I think it's like. I'd have to go on the wiki for this. It's like 5 frames or 10 frames. I think it's 10 frames per loading. It's platform it dependent. Mm. Yeah, it is. On on a real DS, it's like the biggest amount. And then on Wii mm -hmm. or Virtual Console and uh, some emulators, it's less. Uh, yeah. But it builds up to like, what, 40 or 50 seconds throughout the course of the run? Yeah. So... And we found this out like a year ago. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. We we keep finding these things like we're joking that eventually we're gonna find it for the other games too. But it started <laughs> by me finding it in Sky, where where the top screen setting is actually quite significant. Mm. Like like it just takes a lot of time to draw, I guess, for the DS. Then yeah. SPD found it for this game and later for Gates, and I don't think we have found anything for Super. And I mean, SPD in DX Super... is on one screen. <laughs> yeah. In Super Mystery Dungeon, you cannot change the bottom screen on the overworld. You can change it in dungeons, and. Oh, I don't remember the results for that one. I it think it matter. ended up being insignificant. Yeah. Yeah, the, the wiki has a, a great video clip where you can just see them going back and forth and. Eventually, or like very quickly, they become desynced, and the one that doesn't have the map is just way faster. Yep. Yeah, so this is where um, Gengar starts telling everybody about this uh, like story or legend. And we had just seen Gardevoir in our dream. And since we became human, we've, we kind of realized maybe it's us, maybe we're the problem. Yeah, Oilers we were not in but... ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know why Gengar loves to start beef here. Yeah, I don't know. Gengar is a weird character that just wants to be annoying. Yeah, so There's... here we're called out that we're human. And Gengar turns everyone against us, saying, like, we, we need to get rid of the human to fix all our problems in our world. If you want to get the full redemption arc for Gengar, you gotta play the post game, so you won't be seeing it here. <laughs> yeah, th there is the category called True Ending. Yeah. I haven't ran it myself, but I think I will eventually. I think, um, it's a, I think it is a category extension for this game, mm -hmm. but it's, it is a main leaderboard category in, in Rescue Team DX, where uh, it's maybe a bit more like i don't know how to describe it but the game gives you an icon for it in the in the main screen meanwhile in this game it doesn't even give you so it doesn't give, even really recognize that so i, I guess right. that's why it's a category extension i don't know yeah Sh uh shaguma who's a very good runner of this game um who runs the jp versions is i think currently routing a uh, true endings unrestricted Right. I guess we never talked about what unrestricted is, and yeah, that's a no good one. Man, no quick save. So, <laughs> so I did say we talk about it later, and then never brought it up again. All right. So yeah, this is no <laughs> Wonderman, no quick save. So Wondermail is just a password system. So we cannot use passwords that would let us get uh, free uh, missions with uh, any of the, any uh, properties of our like. I mean, like we can just make any missions we want. Uh, meanwhile, quick saves. Yep are used uh, for uh, RNG manipulation. It's a very trivial way to get an RNG manipulation, so we banned that in this category as well. So yeah, if somebody wants to explain what unrestricted does, then go ahead. Yeah, unrestricted basically just means allowing both the Wonder Mill system and Quixes at the same time. So um, yeah, quick saving is it's this 
thing that you can do inside dungeons. Uh, quick saving is just a way to make a one-time save inside a dungeon, so you can kind of interrupt uh, a dungeon playthrough at any time you want, turn off your console, and then resume. And then it will delete your quick save, and you'll have to... Like, you won't have the option to reload from that save if something was bad. The problem is, when they programmed it, they... Um, they made it so that the dungeon RNG gets reset to a consistent value every time. So if you make a quick save inside a dungeon, uh, you will know exactly what dungeon layouts and what enemies you're going to face next. So um, that, that is a way of essentially um, scripting an entire dungeon. So the, the unrestricted runs, uh, if you look at the notes for it, it will literally just tell you what inputs to make for every floor. And then at a high level, you get faster and faster at doing those inputs and you memorize them and you can go really, really, really fast and also finish the game at a really low level. Yeah, it um, completely, completely turns uh, this game into basically a different genre because you're no longer... Uh, you're no longer doing the whole adaptation and uh, like uh, strategy thing, but you're actually just uh, uh, doing quick movement and just practiced inputs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so here begins our fugitive segments. We're basically on on the run, trying to prove our innocence, and we have Pokemon chasing us. So this is the first dungeon. Lapis is kind of my favorite. It is it is a very quick dungeon. Only like usually max four rooms. And so you're very likely to just spawn on the stairs. Yeah, Lapis is full of what we call small layouts. So there's only two rooms at most uh, horizontally and three vertically. So every floor is fast. You are likely to find a bunch of stair, fro uh, stair floors. So it ends up being mm -hmm. pretty fast typically. Yeah. Despite being 14 floors, which is quite a lot yeah so fun fact in the remake they got rid of all of those nice things and uh it's <laughs> actually completely terrible it's big layout strong enemies 14 floors it's very uh, uh dangerous okay, this is one with six rooms or at least five i'm kind of worried we're not gonna have enough rocks <laughs> For the to show off the strat. How many do you so, have? Let's check. Seventeen. So I need a couple uh, more rock stacks. Um, that might be yeah. a dead end. So let's go this way. Yeah, if there's something to the right of the second column, then it's guaranteed to be one of those extra hallways we were talking yep. about, and that has no no guarantees of leading anywhere. In fact, most of the time it will not lead anywhere. So since there's yeah, nothing and, and, on the and, right and, side, you don't want to go there. And again, we know that because this is a small layout, there, we know that there's no rooms on the right side, so the game has no reason to create a main hallway starting from there, because it'll only do that if it's going to connect to a room that's immediately on the right. Mm -hmm. So we knew that that was a, an extra hallway and it wasn't guaranteed to connect anywhere. A lot of small stuff like that that you can learn if you understand how the dungeon generation works, and it allows you to actually make more informed play about your... Um, more informed play. Um, when you're traversing a dungeon, so... Yeah, like, I probably shouldn't even have yeah, checked that sure. hallway, but I thankfully caught myself before going too far in there. Yeah, it was a few years ago when I kind of, like, uh, more, like, normalized this uh, thinking of, like, uh, around the layout generator, because I, I, like, worked on, like, some uni project. I think I was, like, trying to make an implementation of the generator, like a basic one, so so I, I ended up learning a bunch of the details and quirks about it, so so I, I, I realized quickly that this is just straight up information that is useful in the speedrun as well. Yep. Pick up these rocks. Okay, if we can get a couple more sacks, we can go for it. I just don't know what the backup is if it doesn't die to rocks. I guess you can kind of uh... just make your way over there anyways. Don't we um, call that the machine gun Moltres or something? I think something like that. You can you can like kind of start moving Moltres away, and then I think it might become like a like a ping pong match. I forget if Moltres yeah Moltres picks up the rocks that you missed, and then you can like throw them back or something like that if you take your item off. There was something you could do, but it's very slow. Hmm. I do like the idea of a ping pong match that where we use <laughs> rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a, a save state 
at that fight, so we can show it off maybe at the end. Mm -hmm. Cool. That is a good idea. I'm now I'm just picturing this like uh, tennis table where oh. one of the players just like smacks the rock and then it doesn't bounce on the table and just like creates a hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I have some vivid imagination sometimes. Anyway. So yeah, this is... Uh... Another small optimization here in the overworld. It is faster to um, to go right to the hole. If you talk to Syndacol, you can actually access the same dialogue. And you might think that it is faster to talk to him. But actually, uh, the, the way this cutscene is programmed, um, it won't start... It won't execute the instruction that actually starts the dungeon until, I believe, either you or your partner are... Uh, positioned at the entrance of Mount Blaze. So if you talk to your partner, since when the game automatically moves you towards Mount Blaze, you move slower than you can run, uh, you'll end up at the entrance of Mount Blaze slower than if you just ran up to the entrance. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, one of the nice things about this segment is that the enemy spawn rate is lower, so these dungeons are actually quite fun to play because there are fewer enemies, uh, this one also has like medium sized layouts, so you get like uh, not huge layouts, but also not the smaller ones where the enemies might be more densely packed. I That's mean, kind of also... like a 3x3 three three layout here. Yeah, 3x3 three three is what, what you get here uh, most of the time. And uh... ooh, good amount of folks now, I think. Oh, there's more rocks there. Is it worth it though? <laughs> How many do you have? Over 20? Probably fine. 24. That's probably fine. Hopefully, uh, get one more stack to be safe. Yeah, yeah, it could, could be that you miss a lot, then it would be bad. I don't remember if I ever counted how many hit needs to hit, but it's probably a little under 20. But okay. Some fast floors. Yep. We don't unfortunately hear it, but this has. One of the better songs in the game, for sure. It's Dungeon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Fire Pokemon can walk on Lava Tail. Skitty cannot, but Charmander... Or, sorry, Cynical can. Yep. Doesn't really benefit us here, because the partner just follows us anyway. Yeah, and, and if, if you could go on lava yourself, I believe that would actually be not desirable because it makes it so that when you dash in a hallway, it makes you stop at, uh, what is it, every tile or every two tiles? Yeah, it is It is actually really annoying to have uh, the movement property to go on, on lava or water. Uh, we usually tend to avoid it, avoid picking starters that can do that. Although it can always save a little time here and there when you can take a shortcut, but... I feel like the extra inputs you have to make like eat up a lot of the time, that you would yep. say. It is weird because there's the item mobile scarf that lets you move freely and that does not suffer from the same issue. It is a weird way they programmed the dashing. Mm -hmm. Oh. And we are just coming up to Moltres here as soon as we find the stairs, so I guess we'll be trying yeah. this uh, machine gun strat. Piero is a bit of a threat here, it has fury attack could kill you multiple times over, but as long as you don't run head first into it, it's fine. Yeah, because enemies can use multi-hit moves as well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, this will be interesting at least, we'll see what happens. I have Shady here, Shady can help me <laughs> uh, back it up if we... We miss it. Okay, so we're gonna start by throwing a stun seed, I guess. Yeah, I guess we could also miss the throw. <laughs> yeah, in that case, we revert to the normal strat. Yeah. I haven't had it happen in a run yet. Where I, I think I had it happen once. Yeah. Where is the stun seed? Oh, fish. The and we hit it. Good position. Then we go into the indent. Then throw a rock and hand over the rest of the rocks to Syndacoil. And then you just let it pew pew pew. Okay, it was and enough. GG. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. So Syndacoil just throws rocks, a bunch of rocks off screen to kill. Yeah, it's really fast. Sounds really funny. <laughs>
Yeah, so that took a lot of setup time, but then the entire act part of the fight where you actually damage Moltres happened off screen, which is much faster because you don't have to watch any of the animations where you actually like throw rocks or attacks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Usually yeah. you get a lot of rocks from mission rewards and you can just use those. We kind of went out of our way to pick up rocks to show off the strat, but like it's it's very common for you to just get a bunch of rocks from missions and at least you have a use for them with this strat. Yeah, this strat doesn't save enough time for you to go particularly out of your way to get the required items, but yeah, yeah you the items check that you the do... shop. Yeah, exactly. You right. only do it if you check the shop anyway, and there happens to be a stun seed. I yeah, don't we got remember lucky. how much this saved, but it's probably like 10 seconds or something like that. I think I timed it to be a 13 or 14 or something over the regular strat. Yeah. So, like, Fighting you have to buy normally. a stun seed. Yeah. yeah. Fighting normally is quite slow as well because these uh, guys have pressure, which always causes an extra animation when you're trying to hit them. Mm -hmm. Ah, so this part's always sad. Cyndaquil's just like, look how far we've came. There's no way anybody can be following us anymore. Right. And <laughs> we tell him, nah, you're wrong. <laughs> so, so some of the best art you see in this game, mm -hmm. in this area. Also, some good uh, cheese if you're Swedish, but if you're not Swedish, this is a good trance soundtrack. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. OSP. Uh, OSP is Swedish yeah. for cheese. Yeah. What is Swedish for cheese? OST. Or OST. Oh, yeah. okay. TIL. <laughs> It's like the number one Swedish word I know. <laughs> Red UP doing that on Dueling Room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have this obligatory mode here. We see I'm solved. I timed it well <laughs> for the stream. Nice. Yeah, Absol, I think, lore wise, is, always comes before a disaster. People, or like, people had thought that. Like, whenever you see Absol, there has to be a disaster, but I think they just warn you that something is coming. So, kinda, in a sense, it is coming, then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is just not the cause of it. Alright, Frosty Forest. This one has a Pokémon I- oh! And you forgot the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Items. And special. Nice. Okay, now we just gotta, uh, you only had one drop, actually, well, you had two rocks left because you already threw one. Yeah, wow. <laughs> okay. So we barely had enough rocks to do the strat. Um... But yeah. I guess you might want to pick up, like, one pile for, like, random use in, like, Shedin, just for example. Yeah, we'll probably get one from missions, so I'm not too worried. That is true, you're gonna complete oh. a bunch of missions. Just Bad movements, but we're safe. That you will get one. And... As for, like, whatever you have before the missions, I mean, there are some instances where you might want rocks, but usually not. Around this, when, when you can just, like, do so much damage with your moves. <laughs> Didn't spam Quick Attack, we're safe. For it has Fury Swipes and Quick Attack, it is very annoying. Yeah, Hurt is one of the most threatening enemies in, in, in like, honestly, the entire run. Like, uh, it is weak, it has run away, so if you hit it once, it's just gonna run away. But yeah. but having stab quick attack and having fury swipes, it By can, way, like, kill you multiple times over. By the way, shout us to the only part of the game where you have to mash buttons instead of holding Yeah, them. yeah, yeah hey, I don't know why. Don't let you all be through this for some reason. Also, this is the end of the touchscreen percent run because you can play the game fully with the touchscreen, but they forgot to let you pro progress through that with the touchscreen. So if you ever want really? to touch touchscreen percent, that's where time ends. <laughs> wow. I don't know. That's hilarious. <laughs> On like a dot 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 screen? Yeah. Incredible. Oh, I, okay. I want to. I want to like have some meme race of touch screen present in one of the PMD games one day. I mean, <laughs> it it would be better in Sky because in Sky you can actually like automatically progress through text without having to mash. In BRT you'd have to mash, <laughs> and that would be really painful. I mean, it might make for better content when everybody's just furiously mashing. This has to be at that end, I think. 
Yeah, you're in, you're in an extra hallway. It's not likely to lead anywhere. Yeah, the serpentine shape always means it's an extra hallway, pretty much. Yeah, the way it generates is like, yeah, basically a game of snake. It's like, it's gonna <laughs> like it, it takes like, I think, three to five steps and then it turns left or right and keeps doing that until uh, the snake dies, aka it hits something else. Yeah, my movement hasn't been the best. <laughs> Keep waking up enemies that I don't need to wake up. Um, this way. Yeah, also, moving well if, is hard. <laughs> another way to recognize extra hallways, if they start from a corner of a room, uh, then they're always extra hallways, because um, hmm, while the game can generate an extra hallway from any tile from a room, it will only generate main hallways from any coordinate in a room except for the edges. Yep. That is away and if there's more more than one from like a normal room that is not merged then it means that one of them is an extra hallway and by the way the way you can the way the normal hallways generate is that they always uh, have like uh, i mean they can be straight but typically they have uh, one turn like well two turns but 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 like it's go straight out of the room and straight into the next room and then there's like a line that connects between them so 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 when you when you think of the inputs you have to do you basically do like uh straight then to the side and then you go straight and straight and that's like that's like the input sequence you do to go through a, a main hallway and you can like always like predict that in advance mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so our next boss, Articuno. The final bird. Yep. This one is quite a bit better with Syndacool. This is one of the uh, advantages of Syndacool. Yep. At, due to the uh, fire typing, obviously. Here. Uh... Yeah, you can get blaze strats here. Um, but if you're level 17, it's a little trickier to set up because a blast seed no longer is enough. Yeah, you need to do some shenanigans. If you can take damage, that helps. That, that was a good fight. We've this also gone through all the uh, legendary birds without seeing agility once, which is great. Yeah, that yeah. is true. You get, you, they get one turn where they can, can use agility at the beginning of the fight before you can attract them. So if, you, if they do that, then it's really bad because now uh, you're... Uh, they they are going at double speed, which means that when you attract them, they recover twice as fast, so it won't last through the entire fight anymore, and you can just get one shot. Yeah, and yeah. this this one has also has Powder Snow, which is a room-wide move that basically one-shots both of you. You can maybe yeah. survive, but... Yeah. Uh, luckily, the AI for Powder Snow doesn't consider it a room-wide move, so it will not use it turn one, but if it uses agility and then it gets out of the attract, then it can just use Powder Snow and hit both of you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that this game, like, the AI uh, is always programmed to, like, have some sort of range, which is not necessarily the same as the real range of the move. So, yeah, for example, uh, I don't know if it's in this game, but in Sky, if you have Discharge, it's, like, two tile range, I believe, and, uh, like stuff like that then um uh, that power snow was one tire range but then there are some true room range moves like silver wind which we'll probably see later to today and uh yeah agility is also like a room range in the sense that the ai will just use it anywhere in the room yeah silver wind if you've watched whom play the uh, purity forest is a very scary move mm -hmm. yeah Purity Forest uh, is like the true, like, hardest dungeon in the game. It's like, this game is like kind of a roguelike, but not really because you don't lose your level when you die. Well, that that dungeon is made to like, kind of replicate the true roguelike style. Like, uh, you can uh, find that in the other mystery dungeon titles, for example, in Shiren the Wanderer, which is great, by the way, you should play Shiren. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, play Shiren 6, it's on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, if you want to uh, get the true roguelike experience in PMD, you can you can try Purity Forest, which lets you enter at uh, uh, level one only and without any items. So every run is like 
completely like uh, in isolation to anything else you do in the save file and mm -hmm. and yeah that is that is a uh, good good content it's it's very uh, exciting to watch and who is often uh, who miss Diaz is like uh, probably uh, uh, the one who streams it the most purity forest in this game it's quite strategic it's By the way, not a prompt... great speed run, but it's good at challenge run, basically. Go ahead. That's Can good. we talk about the fact that um, when, when you enter uh, all of uh, Mount Blaze, uh, Frosty Forest, and Mount Freeze here, uh, when your partner asks you if you're ready to go, by default it defaults to no, and you have to press the D-pad up to uh, bring it up to yes, except for Mount Freeze, where it defaults to yes. But only yeah. in, in the English version. Yeah, in the Japanese English. version, it works normally. I learned that yeah. recently. <laughs> I've been doing JP runs as well. Yep. And it, it really threw me off in the beginning, because I, I would enter wrong dungeons all the time. Um, disconnects. Yeah. I wonder how the change came about. Maybe some dev was like looking at the code and they're like, oh, this doesn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some mysterious stuff like... For example, there's like people argue that some things in uh, Explorers of Sky, which is like the definitive version after Time Darkness, seem like a little like more rough. Like like some of the graphics seem like they are like not as refined as what you have in Time Darkness. For example, like the map looks uh, I don't know better in Time Darkness, in my opinion. It might be that Sky. The code in Sky was based on like some like slightly before the release version uh, of, of Time Darkness. That that is another one of those weird quirks that just can happen in development, I suppose. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, there are differences like that. For example, like the map and uh, Mount Bristle, like the overworld before Mount Bristle is different, and also. Uh, yeah, no, that before, before Mount Horn. Yeah, that background is different. I think it was also like slightly. I I, I forget. It, I mean, it's subjective which one is better. But 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 some people say that there's even like some. They forgot to remove some of the debug stuff in Sky, which helped us like with reverse engineering. So so. Yeah, that's like further evidence that they that did something weird with that game. Yeah, and by the way, shoutouts to the entire um, ROM hacking community for uh, Explorers of Sky, because th th there is uh, a very it's extensive so of ROM reverse engineering and there are a lot of people making fan games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's great. You, you should check out Sky Temple. It's like the tool and the community. Used. I also like have dabbled with that as well as SPD Wolf. We, we have created uh, the speedrun mod for Sky, which uh, has like a... Uh, way to play the game on a set seed and like you see a bunch of extra information like your in-game time always visible visible to let you compare it between different platforms with different loading times uh, it's pretty pretty cool and then on top of that SPD has just created a cut seamless version of every single uh, of this uh, uh, main PMD games Yes, yeah, so if you want to learn this game, definitely do it on the cutscene list run because I think cutscene list run is about like an hour and a half. So yes, yeah. if you if you're playing it at at, at a, like a high level and uh, you get a good run, it's around a half an hour and a half in cutscene list. That would be around a two thirty time in vanilla. Yeah, so still saves yeah. an hour of gameplay. Yeah, Quite we nice. have uh, we have category extension leaderboards for all the cutscene list hacks too. Yeah, yeah, that they are like kind of like honestly more popular at least in like uh, the other games. Not necessarily in this one. This game is quite nice with the cutscenes being like uh, conveniently short, but still like enough to give you a bit of a break. Like the cutscenes runs might be a bit rougher on the hands, but this one on vanilla is kind quite quite nice to play on a grind, but still when you're like learning the game it's still nice to just go be able to go from dungeon to dungeon yeah some people don't like doing grunts on cutscene less as much uh or at least like can do it for too long because it is really fast paced like to play 
a, a technically demanding game for like an hour and a half or two hours or three hours it is like quite rough while the vanilla games do give you breaks during cutscenes but yeah the later games in the series like have a lot of cutscene time so like cutting that out at the very least makes for like better practice if not just like uh, for someone to just have uh, a better experience like actually grinding runs out if they so prefer yeah, I've personally been like getting back into running Sky Wonder Mill, for example, but I'm mostly doing it on cutscenes. I'm not sure if I want to want to run it run it on vanilla because that uh, category is like honestly mostly cutscenes. That game Five is very cutscene heavy. Yeah, three and a half <laughs> hours of those are cutscenes. Yeah. Oh, this is okay. A, a lot of flinches, there, but with... you can quick cute char at least. Yeah. These are very and annoying. They, they can slow, slow you down and yeah. they have double team. Mm -hmm. So oh, did yeah, we talk way, about Absol here? Yeah, I was gonna mention that. We are supposed to have Absol with us right now. Yeah, but you can actually just go into your menu and get rid of him, and that's better because Absol is slow. Yeah. But not you an do RTDX. have to do it twice, however, because uh, once you mm. make it um, past the main Mount Freeze part, and you go into Mount, Spe Mount Freeze Peak. Once you go through the intermission, the game automatically re-adds Absol to your team. So you have to remember to uh, go back into your option and get rid of it. And you can only do it uh, before entering the dungeon, not while you're inside it. If you forget about it, then you have Absol with you. There's a few things you can do. You can either just accept the fact that Absol is there and just like carrying him around, or, or what you can do is you can go into Absol's IQ skills. You can turn off Item Master, which allows him to... Um, Eat Reviver Seeds, for example. Then you just disable all his moves, put him on wait there, and just wait for him to die. That's an option. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great team. <laughs> Usually, if I if I accidentally take Absol, I I do that, but I don't necessarily like uh, turn off the moves. I just like let him fight and see. Like it might help sometimes, occasionally, because of screen fight skill enemies and like like yeah, it's things you might not need to fight later. It's something we didn't really talk about, but in this game you can use the weight there tactic on your partner as well once you hit level 15. It's uh, the the science on this is inconclusive whether it actually saves time because because uh, the text is still quite slow in this game when it prints. Like the text scrolls slow and getting extra fights might not honestly be worth it, but it also might be. It depends on. Of course, it depends on the RNG you get, so what we would need to know is whether it is better in the long run. And I did like a, a ton of uh, statistical testing in, in one of the late game dungeons and didn't get significant results. I mean, obviously it means that at, at that point it is uh, guaranteed to be close. So it doesn't matter a lot. Like you wouldn't, it wouldn't matter beyond uh, like maybe a dozen seconds or so, which which strategy you choose. So in in that sense, it's good to know that at least you are not making a huge mistake. But it's always annoying to me not knowing if, if what I'm doing is even optimal. You yeah, just I cannot mean... always know it in these games. Yeah. Oh, so here in the story is where we finally proved our inner sense. Ninetales says that we are not the human that was cursed, and that the Ninetales curse, or the the curse, basically is not linked to the natural disasters having or occurring in the world. Yep. And then here we see another earthquake and learn. Oh, Groudon's gonna wake up. Yeah. And that team's gonna go. Team Alakazam, Charizard, and Tyranitar. Team ACT will go and handle um, Groudon. Yeah, meanwhile, the natural disasters themselves are very much still happening. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of the fugitive segment. So now we can finally return home and we'll have access to shops and town. This is like the bathroom break of the run. So this is like usually when I leave. Yeah, it's one of the best bathroom break segments. There's like two long cutscenes, so there's one safe prompt in the middle, but both of them are over two minutes, I believe, so... It is mm -hmm. quite good. Again, you don't have to do anything but hold the B button, so you just can have something hold, hold it for you. I use a cloud spin, for example. If you're playing on emulator, you can bind a hotkey that holds your button. And then if you're playing on Wii U, um, good luck. <laughs> yeah, people use stuff like 
staplers, chairs. <laughs> It's chair. Oh my god, a chair? <laughs> Did a chair on the controller? Poor thing. <laughs> Wasn't it Pixel AR who used the chair? I think so. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. On my DS, I just use a clothespin. Yeah, clothespin is pretty nice on the DS. It's so thin that it works. It works both on my original model and the um, latest the new 2DS XL. Kind of interesting that I have a capture card for both the very first DS and the very last DS. <laughs> yeah, same, I guess. Yeah, I guess... I think it, this game is slightly faster on the regular DS versus new D 3 ds because Yes, but the... it's not for the reason you'd think. Yeah. yeah, it's not loading times. Yeah, so it, it's because the new 3DSs, or the newer models, have like a frame of input delay. Yep. And this game frame. is very, very reactive, heavy, heavy, so... <laughs> yeah. So basically, every time you make a reaction from, like, uh, completely, like, beginning, like, you don't have time to react in advance, you lose one frame. And, I mean, I don't know how many times that happens during a run, but I would imagine you'd lose a few seconds. Yeah. I, I run on new 3DS, so I've just gotten used to the, the delay, but... So you can still get a top time. Even with yeah, I've been running... I've been running on the original, and honestly, I'm kind of like down in the advantage at some points, because <laughs> the screen is so much worse on that console, you might not be able yeah. to see things as well, so you might just lose all the time you save anyway, so it's it's like, it's inconclusive, like, I mean, I guess the D-pad is better on the original DS at least, so it's nicer to make inputs. Yeah. Just made sure we had the correct item we need. I'm definitely sticking to DS myself, but uh, one problem it has is for any category that uses Wonder Mills, um, where you have to type across the screen. Um, on a 3DS, you have the option to run on non-pixel perfect mode, uh, which makes the screen larger. And so and you ugly. Know, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's easier to type that way because the keys yeah, are bigger. Sure. Mm. Yeah, I have learned that recently. I've been doing unrestricted runs. But I'm happy that you're now using a DS, so so I don't have the excuse anymore that you're typing on a huge keyboard when right, you do yeah. like your your crazy fast codes, and I'm stuck with my one-handed typing. <laughs> it's definitely been harder, but it is doable. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least you can do it in in this game. So there's that. In this game, you had to have to learn learn to do it my way, uh, because you can own you cannot uh, type. The characters, there's like a second of cooldown between inputting them. The, the way you can do it quickly is by dragging your cursor through the touch screen and then inputting A for every letter. And that's a huge left handed advantage, by the way. I'm left handed, so I can just use my left hand on the stylus and right hand on the A button. So if, if yeah. you're right handed, you gotta like either learn to use it that way or I guess you could turn your DS upside down. I don't know. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> okay, you just gave me an idea. <laughs> You're welcome, I suppose. Yeah. So he, we usually warp out of a dungeon at the end, but if you're right ah, by yes. the stairs, it's like slightly faster to take the stairs yeah. to uh, skip the, the warping out animation. By the way, Aspiri, if you do BRT codes upside down, I need to have a hand cam. <laughs> I want to see somebody do codes upside down. One. <laughs> and I have a second webcam somewhere, but it's like 20 years old. 20 years. Good. Yeah, I've just been training my left hand to to do the codes. Oh, yeah, you were doing unrestricted because you got like the double yar by technicality, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go with first place. I got first place in this category. Yeah, so and the now under under first place. because because <laughs> the real real double yar holder is too lazy to submit their run. Yeah, yeah it like, doesn't, doesn't exist. Like yeah. the, the fastest time in this game is not on the boards, not because of like any particular reason it's just the the person who got it just forgot to submit it i guess yeah maybe the run is cheated kappa right <laughs> we haven't verified it apparently it is uploaded though somewhere so yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. just on his it's youtube channel on YouTube, don't yeah. look for it though don't look for it i have first place <laughs> Yeah, Shady has the record um, for unrestricted route, and yeah. my I did one run and I got a 210, and the record is 155. It looks like I'm on pace to get sub two if I do another run. 
Um, I don't know how hard it's going to be to bop Shady. <laughs> I'm basically going to try to get a good time and then see, like, okay, can I realistically bop Shady? I say that my run isn't too good because mm. I only grinded it for a short time. The only thing going for me is that I was quite well practiced and I have previous experience with quick saves when I did the run. But as for the grind itself, it wasn't very good because that was before Legends Arceus came out and. I think it was yeah it was b before that I, I think and that 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 game took uh, all my speedrunning attention for <laughs> like a year or something so yeah. I didn't really end up running that and of course since that category is very memorizing heavy I, I can't just like pick it up anymore and beat my PB I would need to sit down for a week and practice all the codes all the quiz answers and all all the quick save manipulations. Mm -hmm. Shout out it to this Wobbuffet, by the way. Yeah. This is much easier to pick, <laughs> pick up and play this kind of reaction-based category. Like this is like a, a skill set that you build slowly over time, and it's like it's like ingrained into your like muscle memory, and you can't really like forget it in the same way. You like might need to do some warm up to get back into it, but but uh, uh, unlike the quick saves, you can actually can't just pick up and play this category. Yeah, that's you know. the big thing about these PMD games is that, uh, at least for the, you know, Wonder Mill categories, they're like decently easy to get into. And once you have run them enough and you know the route, they're also very easy to get back into even after not having run them for a while. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, uh, best dungeon in the game coming up, right? Right. Everyone's favorite, Uproar Forest. Uh... So yeah, the thing here is that we need to get two chestnuts. Chestnuts only spawn on 9F. There is a 25% chance that there are two chestnuts on uh, 9F. There is a very uh, abysmal chance that there's zero. We don't talk about that. <laughs> uh, we're just going right to assume that there's either one or two. But... Yeah. Uh, there's again. We were talking about recruiting something. So so here, um, through floors one one to six, uh, Apom spawns. Apom has the ability pick up. Pick up always uh, is guaranteed to uh, pick something from the item pool and uh, give it as an held item. So since the only item that can spawn spawn on nine F is uh, the chestnut, if you get Apom recruit, you're guaranteed to get two. Yeah. But, Unless uh, you get zero. Yeah, yeah, we don't talk about that though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe we will talk about that. Zero happens on like some weird exception where like the I think the partner spawns on or the player spawns on top of the item and it doesn't want to spawn the player on top of an item so it gets deleted. I forget. Anyway, yeah, like that. we want a bomb. We haven't got an APOM yet, so it's looking a bit concerning right now, but yeah. Uh, one thing about and pick up you... is that some it might sometimes pick up nothing, but that is actually, I believe, because it chose money and it doesn't pick up money, but there is no money on that floor, so it will it always pick up the chest. Ah, chosen. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, if we don't get two chestnuts here, uh, the objective is going to be to have um, two chestnuts total. Uh, so we will have to go back inside this dungeon, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. all the way back to 9F and get another chestnut. Yeah, it's an entire extra dungeon that you have to do. It uh, loses so like two and a half minutes, maybe. Uh, it is not even like a run killer itself still, because this game just has so much variance that one dungeon being two and a half minutes is still recoverable. You can you can have that happen uh, in the late game dungeons as well. Like each of them can have that much time time variance. So so again, I mean, I believe there were recent records that didn't have double chestnut even. Yeah, if all that often had PBs that don't have double chestnut, but. But yeah, of course it's a huge time save, you want it, but looks like we're not getting APOM. Yeah, so no APOM. We're on the straight 25% uh, shot here. Let's see if we get it. We'll find out in two floors. <laughs> we do have the scanner orb. This scanner orb is very, very useful here because especially if you don't know whether there's two chestnuts, okay, you have to explore the entire floor. So now we can just know. 
And one. Nah, yep. One. Okay, so we're Unlucky. going back to this place. We hit the 75%. Yeah, never found an escape orb or maybe we would have used it there. Yes, escape orb is another item that you can use because uh, if you don't see the stairs on that visit, after you get your chestnut, you can just leave and in the hopes that the next visit will get the stairs immediately. Oh. <laughs> and you can also it. skip, in general, just using an escape orb uh, skips the end of the dungeon cutscene, which saves a bit of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that fight is trivial. I don't know why the fight is there. I guess it's for show. But they actually <laughs> made it difficult in RTDX once again, the remake. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, that fight is free. They are very weak, considering our level. Yeah, the stress have changed a lot in that game, for that fight. You have to, like, actually... I think it's like, yeah, it has one of those chats where it differs depending on who you enter the fight as, because it's gonna change your, like, configuration, like the, like, who is where. So it's gonna be... Yeah, this mission was a little weird, because they ask you to punish the bad Mankey, and basically they just tell you to go beat up Pokemon. <laughs> um, the Mankey have followed us, though, and they see that we have a chestnut, and for whatever reason, they love chestnuts. And so they're willing to work for us. And this is like our, our arc where we're going to improve our base. Yeah, so they, they can work. They have muscles. They can work really, really hard, but they cannot peel the chestnuts. They want us to peel the chestnuts for them. Despite them leaving where the chestnuts are, they want us to get the chestnuts, which is very annoying. And this, these chestnuts, again, are used to like build our or renovate our base. Mm -hmm. This you is need like, two of them to continue the story, and yeah. unfortunately we only got one. This is like basically a side story, even a lot of the game structure stuff considers this to be post-game. Like, Upper Forest is after the last dungeon, for example. And you can yeah. like already, while this is going on, you can progress the like mission count in the, in the story. Like, you can actually like get your uh, missions cleared and it will count towards the progress. Really? So, yeah, you could do your Mount Steel missions now, technically. The ah, I didn't know that. The problem with that is that it actually causes some... Like, like you will have more days where Pelipper can deliver mail, so it's actually quite a big time loss. But, right. But you could do it. Like, like one, one strat has been to go, when you unlock Uproar, you go into Mount Steel, you hope that you recruit Zigzagoon. Yeah, so we have to because go back that, in. Portugal. That one also has to pick up. But that has its own issues. It levels up too much. Losing a lot of time. Oh, Ooh, nice. We got our first Monster House. house. Oh. So, Monster um, House is something that if you have played this game, you know... Wait, why did Cyndaquil not follow It's also him? a thing in every mystery dungeon. You just get a lot of enemies running on you. It might be due to your position, I'm not sure. Yeah. I wanted to save that warp orb. Because it's our only one, but Cyndaquil did not follow. Yeah, and monster houses are going to be much more dangerous later on because the enemies in this dungeon aren't that strong, but uh, yep. in the dungeons that we'll have coming up, they are. So spawning yeah. a monster house there is probably death if in later on. Yeah, like you could fight that one, but these things have supersonic and yeah. disable. So the chance of really something slow. going really bad is high and also kind of slow. Mm hmm. You should probably save later. <laughs> yeah, not looking good. <laughs> I do have backup saves with a ton of orbs, but we will we will be safe. We'll also be checking shop. Also, on the topic of pickup, what's fun is that technically you could choose Meowth as your starter who has pickup, and then this place would be guaranteed double pretty much, unless you get zero, but again, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, the problem is Meowth isn't that great. I think it's only runnable if you find two Frost TMs. Yeah, you need two Frustration TMs to have Meowth be runnable. Uh, first of all, you, your attacking move is Scratch. It's a slower animation, so you just lose time throughout the game. But yeah. also, you, that's pretty much the only move you will ever get. You will get Bite eventually, but since this is Gen 3, it will be special, so it 
Yep. Not only does does it not get stabbed, it also don't, doesn't get your power band buff, so it's gonna deal abysmal damage. You don't want to use Meowth in this game outside of many categories for that reason. Again, yeah. again, if you get frustrations, you can run anything, so that's why Meowth could work, but getting frustrations is unlikely. It is only 10% to get one if you check the shop on all four days, and that is only for getting the first frustration. The second one you can't even buy, you'd have to find it on the ground. Oh no. Um, How are you getting this many monster houses? Ooh. Okay, so yeah, this is... I've seen it go could, wrong way. Yeah, if Syndacle came into the hallway, you could maybe have him fight things in the dark or off screen or something, but no, it's looking a little rough. Uh, maybe I could have attracted the thing closer in. You block the path and like try to have... <laughs> Cynical come over here. Yeah. It might also cause some of them to turn around. Oh, Cyndaquil! It's just gonna yeah. keep running in circles. Okay, I guess we're just gonna take him out. Cyndaquil doesn't want to come with us. Come on, C-Dot. Getting two monster houses in one in this dungeon is kind of rare since it's only like so many floors. <laughs> Thankfully, we have a lot of missions coming up, so I can get more escape uh, max elixirs from there. But I'm running a little low. All right, convenient. One right by the stairs. Oh, yeah, that was good. Nine F. Yeah. So I guess in that case, we don't know if we have if we had two chestnuts, but it doesn't really matter at that point since we. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just one. annoying to see that there's two chestnuts and you didn't <laughs> need them. Yeah, I think my last run I did had two chestnuts on the revisit. But now that we have two, we can talk to these mankeys, because they've stopped working because they're hungry. Suboptimal so angle, SMH. Oh, is this suboptimal? Yeah, you need to talk to the one at the bottom, from the bottom, because that way they all only turn a slight amount. I thought it was the one from the right, on the right, from the middle. Well, if you talk to that one, then they talk to the one at the bottom turns like 90 degrees, which is slower. Although, I don't know how much it saves when you don't have to run as much. But mm. since you have to talk to them twice, I'd imagine that turning matters the most. Uh, yeah, they... I, I always thought it was at the bottom, but then for some reason I switched to this one because I thought I read somewhere that it was the right one and not the bottom one. Well, let's say the like this should be in the wiki. <laughs> check the wiki, check the wiki. Yeah, I'm checking the wiki. Uh, so let's do the PMD wiki. It has like all our routes pretty much. I remember middle... it's saying... Oh, Middle Minky from the bottom. Yeah. So What's the middle the... one, I guess? Yeah, I guess maybe yeah, I thought the middle was... It, it, the yeah, middle one a... is the bottom most. And there's a note that says that, theoretically speaking, talking to the bottom binky from the very right would be three frames faster, but the end requires is super size. This is probably not worth trying for. Right. Wait, so did so, I do so it no, right I, or wrong? I, I think you did it right. What does the middle... I, I, middle is uh, ambiguous here. Yeah, yeah, that's so why... From I... the bottom. <laughs> Do you mean middle in terms of like the y axis or the x axis? Because I thought it's. I. Okay, I can adjust the wording. <laughs> I, I, I think it's for, in terms of the y axis, because then it refers to another minky as the bottom minky. So I'm, right. I'm assuming this is bottom, middle, upper. Interesting. Okay, yeah, I should fix this. <laughs> I think, yeah, depending on how you interpret the middle there, you could talk to completely different ones and. I interpreted middle as the, the one to the right. So, so was no the result then that it actually saves significantly enough time to not need to like run all the way to the bottom one? I suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, if you run to the one on the bottom, it would take even longer to get there. Okay, so we're back in Mount Steel. Um, 
we have to do four missions, Damn. and thankfully in this goal, in this dungeon we can do four in one visit. Yeah, so there's a very convenient mission that uh, gets uh, scripted for you. It's in your mailbox. Uh, it's always like a peach that gives you, I think, 150 money. 200, I think. Okay, yeah. On 3F. So yeah, this is actually a floor where you cannot even have missions spawn normally. So this is like an exclusive mission that you can... That just makes this speedrun so much better. Imagine if this mission didn't exist, you'd have to get some... You'd need to basically do an extra dungeon visitor. You'd need to do some longer dungeon. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a pigeon. Which is which is also harder to get missions for. Yeah, and I think you can't get a mission here on floor three normally, right? No, you can't. Nope. They they only spawn on five and up. Basically, the board is made so that it generates uh, missions only from the halfway point of the dungeon, roughly. Ah. So, yeah, that's why. Like, I mean, if I guess it. Uh, the exact middle is included, so you get 2 and 3F on Tiny Woods, and, and 3F is included in Thunder Wave Cave. But in Mount Steel, for example, you only start getting missions from 5F. Don't you love spawning in a big room and just like having to spend a moment figuring out where even you are? Yeah. Yeah. It is actually slightly... takes a slight amount of time. Uh, to look at a big room compared to a small room. Yeah, because yeah, when you spawn in a small room, you can at least look for the nearest hallway, so you can kind of plan out what you're going to do, since there's like a little bit of low, like, or delay before you can move. Yeah, and these Pokemon are a little bit too tanky to die to just like a regular attack. Yes, in oh. this dungeon you can only kill Spearows and Zigzagoons reliably with regular attacks. Yeah. Um, I still need the client. I think. I wasn't paying enough attention to tell, okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes like if you, I spend too much time on a floor and I see the stairs, it's like, oh, I must have got the client. Usually if I'm not sure if I got it, it means that I didn't, I've learned. Yeah, I should probably take note of that. Um, <laughs> the times I've been unsure, it's like, yep, I didn't get them. Okay, so that's four missions, we can leave. A little bit slow since we had to go all the way to 7F. Yeah, this is a big time save if you can get the, the uh, find item near missions here. Mm-hmm. And then very rarely you can get find that missions on all floors and then also an escape orb. Well, so in this just... case, you would not need an escape orb because the 3F is always there, but yeah. It, okay, it yeah, is possible to get all four here near mission, but you need to get a near mission. I guess mission I haven't even thought of that possibility. I, I thought I think... Jesus gotten it once. All four near? Wow. I I've gotten got... three near multiple times, but not all four. You basically have one chance when you check for the Upper Fortress mission to get a near mission here. Because otherwise, like, you can only hold eight missions. So you can't afford to get an extra Mount Steel mission early on. That's why we get that one that's guaranteed from our mailbox. Anyway, there's going to be one more mission days, and then it will basically be on to the um, last two dungeons of the run. Yeah, we this should where... <laughs> Yeah, did we mention this that Alakazam's team went to um, uh, Magma Cavern to stop Grodon? I briefly mentioned when we had the Nine Tails cutscene. Okay. So yeah, they haven't returned, and this is where we find out. So Shifri's basically gathered all rescue team leaders here and is asking who who's willing to go look for them. It would be great if we could say yes, but we're not given that option. I always thought this this part of the cutscene was pretty cool as a kid. 
Did you get some of the, the cool team leads to step up to help? Yeah, Lombre's actually causes yeah. us to lose like two and a half minutes. There's or a more, lot of actually. cool sprites on the screen in these cutscenes, like, for sure. Yeah, so Blastoise, Artillery, and Golem all agree to go. So all we have to do is just find a way to take out Lombre. <laughs> yep, he does attack us early on. We can somehow self-defense. Yeah. It's it sucks seeing an Apom here. Like you could have saved just three minutes, but didn't want to join. So all we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> we're ways to save time, you know. Missed opportunities is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, here we're, we're just forced to do another mission day. Uh, and just two missions is what you need to complete, so we're just going to visit Tiny Woods. Yeah, final missions of the run. Mm. Oh, do we have a near mission or is it deliver? I think it's a near on floor three. I probably should check that. You can check it in your... Um, I menu. get a feeling that you have some near, but yeah, you should check. Yeah, we'll check it here. I'm hoping that the near mission's on floor two. No, okay. Wait, wrong text. Yeah. So we can leave after this floor. Um, there's the stairs. No, that wasn't there. Yeah, Do seeing you... the yellow dot on the map with the yellow background is tough. Pardon? Yeah. Do you uh, keep notes on what items you need during the run? Or do you just, like, kind of memorize it? You, usually I keep notes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, use a note bad in this, in this game for that stuff. I, I think less so what item I need, more so, like, remember what floor it is. Because usually, like, I'm constantly thinking about the item I need. And I stop, like, I don't stop thinking about it until I find the item. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I, I often have, like, a notepad uh, instance open on my PC when I run this game, and I just, like, type some notes there. Yeah, because yeah. you, like, you pick up the missions you do, like, over an hour ago, or maybe, like, an hour and a half ago at this point. So it's kind of just hard to, re like, remember back, like, which ones did I get? And here we find out that Blaster's team got wiped away immediately, so we finally just offer ourselves up. Yep. And yeah. this is one of the uh, most difficult dungeons in the run, uh, Magma Cavern. Uh, it's gonna be 23 floors, so very long. Mm -hmm. And uh, very large layouts, very tough enemies, monster houses. Do you have an orb yet? No, so we'll check shop and uh, save. <laughs> They're really high spawn, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is one of the probably the biggest like time barriers dungeon in the game, honestly. Uh, I'd argue argue that uh, like again, time uh, varies more in Magma Cavern, but uh, Sky Tower is more about like surviving. Magma Cavern or Sky Tower is more what? About surviving. Hmm. Than, yeah. than the time variance, of course. There's more, but also... Uh, yeah, that's the point. That dungeon, like, depending on how you count it, the summit makes it longer, so it also would have inherently more variance for that reason. But, like, yeah. Magma Cavern is just worse in the sense that if you get an unlucky floor, you have to fight so many things, so it just loses so much time. Yeah, I... Like, before I got first place, like, I'd be coming in with, like, a three, four minute lead, even five, one time five minute lead, but then I just lose it all in Magma Cavern because it can just go yeah, bad, yeah, bad yeah, in yeah. Sky Tower. You don't even need, like, a single incident or something. Like, Magma Cavern can just give you, like, five or six bad layouts in a row and you're already losing a few minutes. Yeah, exactly. You can get such an incident easily in, like, Sky Tower that loses you a lot of time, yes. but it's easy, easily... You can point to that when, when you get, like, a spawn in a monster house with hail and you don't have anything but maybe a Petrify Orb. Uh, that kind of stuff might lose you a lot of time, but if you just get bad, like, layouts in Sky Tower, it's probably 
less bad, because again, lower enemy spawn rate in that dungeon. We're gonna get extra techs because of this. <laughs> Checking the shop on these days is really slow, because you just get these extra like cutscenes. Yeah, especially the purple Kecleon on these particular days is really bad. Not getting anything. I guess we can check green Kecleon. Um, how are we on items? We have a tons of Reviver Seeds. And we still have one more day to check at least. Yeah. The shop gets refreshed every day, just in case it wasn't clear. Mm -hmm. Like if we get if we get wiped because of a monster house, I can just reload the the save I have, and I think in that one I have yeah. like four monster house orbs. But surely, like we've 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 cleared our monster house luck with uproar. No more monster houses for us. Surely. <laughs> so we can back it up with quick saves, but we need to quick save a, a warp scar first. I guess we didn't say, but in, the, in our dream, we learned from Gardevoir. Um, that once our mission is done, we'll return back to being a human. Um, okay, nothing. I guess, give me a reviver seed, because we're going to need it. All oh, these x-ray specs. Can't afford it, though. Not quite enough money. But you're actually having quite a lot of money. Yeah, X-ray specs are cool. They make you see all the enemies and items on the map. Yeah, it actually helps out a ton because then you can see where the enemies are and go the other way. And it can help you avoid fights if you end up finding these stairs pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, they're used extensively and um, unrestricted on the first floors. Yeah, one thing we didn't mention is that, again, to quick save, you have to play the first floor with uh, random RNG. So there will be still some RNG in that category. But the X-ray specs help with that. So here we're getting some uh, quicker kills by letting Sidakul fight in the darkness. It's actually mm -hmm. quite satisfying to do. Yeah, because if you oh. don't see the enemy yourself, once again, it will play the on whiff animation, which is typically faster. Yep. Oh, wait. I should have checked that scarf. It's not going to be warp scarf, surely. Oh, yeah, mm. we are looking for warp scarf. Meanwhile, so, my, my Sky Wonder Mail brain wanted you to pick up that apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's around where you just want apples, apples, apples for days. Yeah. Right, so we're looking for Warp Scarp because that's an item where it'll um, it'll just warp you to another random point um, of the map. Um, I think it has to be another room, right? It can't warp you to the same room. Yes. But, well, um, it has to be off screen, I, I believe. Yeah, if oh, the room okay. is big enough, maybe you can spawn on the other end. Gotcha, yeah. okay. So, right, after a few turns that you have it equipped, it'll just warp you somewhere else, which... Um, can save a lot of time, particularly in uh, the um, layouts in Skytab or Peak, which are those uh, ring formations like the ones we saw in Mount Thunder, uh, because it, it basically means that you can potentially skip having to fight a lot of uh, enemies in hallways. So if we find that, like that, that can actually save a, a good one or two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that one's good. I think I got it in my PB. There is a, there is a consideration with the warp scarf where, uh, while it's pretty good on average, the 
or maybe I'd say that the median is pretty good. The uh, worst case scenario with Warp Scarf is that you will basically never find the stairs. Um, unlike when you're just walking around, you're like guaranteed to run into the stairs eventually. Yeah. So that brings down the average quite a lot. So you still need just, like some skill in. in wow, warp that scarf. worked. We got so lucky there. <laughs> oh okay. my god, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that that feels good, good to pull off and maneuver yeah. like that. But but yeah, what I was gonna say is that with the warp scarf, you do need to know when to take it off because at some point uh, the remaining rooms uh, are so uh, few on the floor. Uh, that the odds of finding the stairs by just walking become much better than just uh, warping randomly to probably yeah. uh, already rooms that you've discovered. Yeah, that so, is we're so good. Well, I couldn't help but notice, I don't think we've ever talked about text, text lock clearing. Uh, that's a technique that Vaughn's been doing here and there. Uh, right. When text gets printed in the message lock down there, that takes a while, and it keeps you locked until the text is finished printing. Um, but one thing you can do is, if it doesn't have to scroll, uh, then you don't uh, lose any time for it. Um, you can just um, get released immediately, because it's the scrolling animation that actually loses you all the time. So what you can do is, if you have a, fu uh, a full uh, text log, and you know that you are about to run into text, like for example, walking on an item, you can quickly flash your inventory, which resets the uh, message box and makes it empty. So uh, once you step on the item, you can uh, you can run away from the item immediately without having to watch it. And that actually does end up saving time. Yeah. yeah. Another related thing that we didn't talk about is pause skips. So whenever there's uh, text um, printing, uh, it also uh, gives you like one second to read it before it continues like the animations. Uh, it's like basically you need to press A to pro progress kind of thing, but it does it after one second and it doesn't kill you, give you any indication of it actually waiting for that. So so it is a very common like beginner mistake to not know about the pause skips. You can actually even buffer them by holding B and A, but you can also mash various buttons such as A to achieve them in this game. Yep. Right, or L. Yeah, L is uh, usually a favorite among runners to do it, because that is uh, like a button that is easy to press and doesn't do anything normally. Oh, this is yeah, because if, for example, you mash A, and like if you over mash, you could, for example, send out a basic attack, which loses more time. Yeah, and if you're trying to buffer the B and A, you might just skip your turn on accident, yeah. because that's the bind to keep, skip a turn. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I only learned up until... Well, I hadn't realized until recently until Shady pointed this out. It makes more sense for this mechanic to exist. It sounds kind of weird, but it makes more sense if you've played the original Shiren. Yep. Uh, where uh, it makes a sound anytime, like when, when you when you see a message in the message log, uh, it, it it makes a sound as if like you're advancing a tax box. Uh, so you can, it, it's pretty intuitive there that pause skips exists because you press a button and you get the yeah. Oh. I think in that game it doesn't automatically progress it ever, but also that game does not have a. A method to access like your message history because it's a super yeah. nintendo game it's the like one of the first mystery dungeons it's pretty rudimentary so so there's like a lot of missing missing little features like that so so it's pretty important that you get the time to read read the text so they kind of kept it around but they like kind of made it uh hidden in a sense here yep. i think that was our first death of the run Yes, I think so, which is <laughs> yeah. kind of insane. Like at yeah, this, this point, you're at this, sure. at this point you're expected to die a lot more. Yeah, yeah. and of course, right after I ate an apple, I feel like that's so common. <laughs> yeah, because reviver seeds uh, also refuel your belly, so it's technically kind of a waste of an apple if you're eating it and then dying anyway. Over the apples are usually not a concern. You can find them in like every dungeon. Yeah, they're yeah. really rare in these last two, though. It is true. You might starve if you don't, don't uh, get lucky enough, which is why you want to bring apples, but... Yeah, I do have... Uh, okay, we will have to take this out. But yeah, I do have one extra apple for Sky Tower, at least. Or it's a huge apple. Huge apple should work. A yeah, normal but... apple might be a little tight. 
Fun fact, there exists uh, an itemless category uh, for this game where you... It's exactly what it sounds. You try to beat the game without using any items. And this is one of the harder points of the run because you have to make it through uh, Magma Cavern through all 23 floors without ever having access to eating. And that's hard. I wonder if anybody tried Trico in that because although Trico kind of sucks, Let's see, like survive with zero belly, with absorb. Oh, but that true. would involve a lot of grinding. Meanwhile, doing it with normal strat involves just grinding for luck. Like I've seen the itemless attempt where you like just grind Sky Tower for like I don't know four hours until you can do it without. <laughs> There's some Maybe interesting uh, category extensions for this. Yeah. There's like, oh, there's death percent, which is just die in the first dungeon. I think that record is free if you do like have your partner die off screen. But don't steal my strat. I was going to do that one day. It's not probably not as easy as you think because you don't have access to anything but the you first can three get tactics. After, yeah, you have to do basically you have to reset to get um, an enemy in the same room and then select go after foe and then go to the opposite end of the room and hope you're off screen. You have to like yeah. turn off all the moves as well. Okay, so this next dungeon, this pit, the second part of this is just one floor. But the most annoying Pokemon spawn here, Onyx and Steelix, and they're so tanky. I think you can also get one shot uh, crit if you're uh, Cubone and you get hit by Absorb in, in Tiny Woods. I'm not sure about that though. Oh. Oh, there's another death. It's yeah, interesting. Steelix I'll have to play around with that with Cubone. And I believe this is quite literally the only floor where Steelix is even spawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the only, only floor time. in the game, or in the uh, main run at least. Yeah, this is one. This is probably the most important floor to get Astera floor on. Yeah, because all the Pokemon are just tanky. But yeah, second floor here is just cutscenes, and then next floor is Groudon. I feel like it's crazy these guys have been in this dungeon for multiple, multiple days at this point. Like, fighting Groudon. Yeah. Still going. Yeah, how they're still going? And then, no and then we just use attracting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this boss fight is basically the same as every other boss fight. It's not too bad. I think this is one of the less scary boss fights as well. Yeah, Groudon doesn't really have anything that shows any like the only concerning thing it could happen is an ancient power boost, but Yeah. Yeah, like at worst case you're losing like one seed, I think. Yeah, typically you don't care about Groudon getting a turn. Meanwhile, in uh, a lot of the other bosses, you don't even want to risk a turn. Yep. The and there, there's done. And if you are using Cyndaquil, Groudon probably will not even get a turn because uh, Cyndaquil is uh, pretty good here. Uh, uh, Groudon's special defense is so high that you deal no damage, but since you drop its defense with Tail Whip and uh, Leer, uh, mm -hmm. you can deal quite significant damage with uh, your physical attacks and since Syndical has them, two of them is better. Squirtle would just use like special moves. At this point you would have uh, Water Gun, Bubble and Bite, uh, all of which probably deal one damage, especially in the sun maybe Bite would deal a couple more points. Uh, you don't use Squirtle's attacks in that fight, that would be a waste of time. You just use Tail Whip on its own to help mm -hmm. drop the defense faster. But yeah, that as a result makes Groudon usually get a turn against you with Squirtle. Yeah, usually I love when Ember misses because Ember does no damage. Yeah, it's so it's like fast. Fun. That's the one time I want Ember to miss. Yeah, unless you're like over leveled, at which point you start doing damage with Ember because it's sun boosted. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's not too significant. I, I think like the highest I've seen, well, like, with no crit at least, is like fourteen. 
So maybe with the crit and blaze, you can do some damage. Okay, so this will be... I guess we have two more chances to get an orb. Um, we got lucky with that other one. We had one monster house and we were able to set, do the yeah, little just, loop. Yeah, that was cool. But I guess they all must have gone the up way and not, none went the other way. I guess I didn't point it out, but that meteor looks like an eye, like a eye or like a meatball or brain. I don't know. Interesting. Okay. I guess I'll I'll check shop. Hopefully, we can refill. I guess revs. I mean, we only lost two, but we had bought one before, anyways. So I think we're still good. I'm just hoping for at least one Petrify Orb. No. Okay, well, let's escape Orb, I guess, if we get a one on floor one. Wait, no, 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 no. I need to save some money for the next day. Like, this one also starts you on the top one. It's like, are you ready? You just have to mash A. But on the other ones, it starts you at the bottom one. So you have to, like, hit up. All right, this is the, the final day of cutscenes before Sky Tower. So what basically they told us was um, we need help and that we should ask Rayquaza to help us stop the meteor. But Rayquaza's in a dungeon very high up in the sky, so... Alakazam and Zatu are working together to make a, a gem to teleport us up there. <laughs> However, they couldn't make you teleport stra straight to the top. It conveniently has to be at the base of the dungeon, so you still have to play it. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have enough power. Um, also, this community loves to do races. There's always community races going on, in case you're interested. Some people like to dodge races. <laughs> yep. Their name is like rhymes with uh Wittaloo. Wittaloo. Yeah. Right. I don't know, maybe maybe on Friday we'll we'll do a community race for uh for red coming out. If you didn't know, they're they're bringing Red Rescue Team to the the Switch Nintendo Online. Kind of sounds like a good meme, but again, somebody would <laughs> have to give me a family plan to actually join for that. <laughs> yeah, for everyone who actually has the subscription. <laughs> I yes. think Cheese had one, but yeah. I don't think I do. Yeah, I'm on my girlfriend's Nintendo Online plan, so... <laughs> yeah. Currently, I've been mainly doing Sky Wonder Mail. Uh, we have some new developments in that category. Mm -hmm. Crazy, because that was considered one of the more optimized uh, categories across all PMD games and yeah. major rounds. Matter X ray specs, you're really, really not getting anything for orbs. It's crazy. Yep. You spend so much time checking and completely just got a yeah, shaft it on that end. Unless Shadow Ball sells for like 3k, I'm gonna save. Yeah, we, we've got an unlucky, uh, not a single orb in shop. As we mentioned earlier, this is one of the more dangerous spots of the run coming up. So definitely good to save. Uh, yeah, so, so some things, some annoying things in this dungeon include ghost enemies. Uh, so, so ghost Pokemon in this game, they can go through any tile they want, including walls. So they'll chase you into hallways if uh, if they want. Um, there's hail, there's monster houses, um, there's Venomots that have silver wind and can hit you across a room and get a speed boost. Um, yeah, there, very yeah, early. Fields that have like pressure and agility. And... They can just one shot you as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of really tough enemies, basically. Yeah, very early on, the ghosts are very annoying. They can go into the wall. 
Um, and you can't hit them when they're in the wall. You can throw rocks, I guess. But yeah, Shuppets are the ones we don't want to see. They're super tanky. They have moves like Spite. Um, the Screech. I don't think they can confuse you. They have Knock Off to knock your equipment off. And if you're very unlucky, they can knock it off off the side and it, you just get it away. Yep. There's also Shedinja in this dungeon, um, which Skitty can't hurt with anything outside of rocks. Although I believe it only appears in the uh, early few floors. Yeah, Shed Ninjas do like no damage and they just, yeah, like you said, you die to one rock. Yeah, yeah. Shed Ninjas just do you have rocks check. Yeah. Cynical can kill him with Ember, thankfully. That is true. It is a problem if you for some reason don't have uh, a bite and you have Squirrel. Oh yeah, so I saw you uh, menu instinctively to try and attract, but because you saw the <laughs> use course. Yeah. Oh, maybe we should have attracted anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Shoppets are so tanky, like their defense is really high. And now we got well, spited already. So this means that we need to use an elixir, otherwise we will be link. Yeah. I actually think this is actually one of the big uh, advantages of having uh, your partner on weight data here because it makes fighting these shoppets in hallways so much easier. There is a big drawback of having weight there here because you could just at any moment get uh, uh, your partner delinked without you having time to react to it. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's one thing that's actually better with Squir Squirtle. It's, that's right, because he has an easier time killing the shoppets. It is true. Yeah. But, and I think in my PB, I got requires all, everything to hit, and I don't think it's still. I still probably at least a range. I don't think it's like think so, yeah. or anything to kill. Like maybe yeah, high my... level with special band, you can kill. In my PB, I got knockoff from a shoppet, so I lost my um, special band, and I just gave it a detect band. There's the shoppets, or sorry, not the Sheninjas. <laughs> um. Okay. Thankfully, we hadn't used anything. That yeah, turn, it's, so it's good nothing. to avoid using moves if at all possible, because then the spite will not work. Fun fact, Shoppet is one of the few things you can recruit here. Oh, Rich. Speaking of which, <laughs> oh, are, we doing, are we doing Shoppet strats? Yeah. Looks like we're showing off the Shoppet strats. Okay, so if I remember to do so this, so this is more of a meme. But yeah, you you like you can turn off Item Master moves on, and then well, actually, exclusive move user should be off. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, because you, your best attack is the regular attack. Ah, oh, okay. So, it's so you turn on Screech and your regular attack. And that way, Shoppet can like fight. I guess night. This one has Nightshade, but it's not a lot of damage. You will deal more damage after a Screech. Yeah. So that so. the advantage of Shoppet is that I can literally just lure enemies towards it. Yeah, it depends on like the angle you meet them at. But sometimes you can completely avoid encounters if you have a Shoppet. Shoppet with you, and just gonna hide inside the walls. This is actually very similar to the recent developments in in Sky Wonder Mail category, where we give our partner uh, the uh, mobile scarf and put it on on this tactic to lure the enemies away. In that category, it's less about getting the enemies stuck and more about not killing them, because because in that in that category, it's optimized uh, to the point where we actually care about skipping level ups. So we don't get any experience and we skip all the level up by not having any fights. Wait, it goes and for the item? It also skips some uh, on-screen animations by that doing that. Mm -hmm. I think There's a good clip items. of... Uh... Oh. Ooh, actually? Yo, let's go, actually. There's a good... Oh, oh forgot. Uh, picked it up. There's a good clip on your channel where up it like holds a whole monster house by yeah. going into a wall <laughs> yeah yeah i have a very good use case of shop at like actually avoiding an entire monster house like, if you pay attention shop it's just in the wall like holding two pokemon there currently shop it is holding move. three pokemon but i uh, wonder what's gonna happen when you have to go there if they i wonder if they will even switch to you yeah i'm just gonna see I guess okay, so. they did switch. Yeah, because I guess yeah, Shoppet tries have... to get closer to you. 
I don't know. If the shop it sees enemies, it should just be aggro on them. So, by the way, what this tactic avoid the first hit does is it tries, it, it is like go the other way, it aggroes towards enemies. But See, this thing has uh, good yeah, defense. Yeah, it has a lot of defense up, so you might want to tail or something. Actually, it works. Anyway, what I was gonna say was that uh, the tactic makes uh, it aggro towards enemies, however, it will not uh, approach them first. So, like this, it sets the target tile as like the tile, uh, one tile away from the enemies, which normally causes them to like wait the turn and let the enemy approach first, which is like pretty standard practice when you play this game, so it's like kind of like trying to be intelligent like a player would. However, yes. there's a weird side effect that happens when when uh, you have the dedicated traveler IQ skill enabled, because that moves the order in which the AI processes uh, the movement and selecting a move. So dedicated traveler makes the AI uh, uh, prioritize the movement first. So it sees that if it's next to an enemy, it sees that the target tile is one tile behind. So it walks backwards, and that causes what is what, what you're seeing right now, uh, where this shopette is just walking backwards. And since it's a ghost, it can go into the wall and just hide there and like grab the enemy and just have it be stuck there. Yeah. So we don't have to deal with that coughing because it's just trying to get uh, shopette. Although Shuppet's confused, poor thing may not survive. Yeah, there are other ghosts, so of course a Shuppet can die when, when, when it runs into a ghost, but uh, right now it got unconfused. Oh my god. Oh, I wonder why... Okay. He's safe. Woo. In, in, interestingly, he didn't use any moves, but uh, usually when he gets cornered, he would use some moves. And I guess this is why we... Um... Uh, Turp Knight and Master off for this, because eventually Shuppet might die and we don't really Yeah, we wouldn't... Point. I mean, if if you have a page of revives, then you might as well keep it on. But uh, uh, if you don't want him to spend your revives, then you just turn Knight and Master off so he doesn't consume your revives. Yeah, Hail Floors here are annoying because you get these extra animations. Exactly. I was contemplating putting Cynical on wait there. It, <laughs> I feel like at this point I might as well commit. This has never happened, but technically it would be optimal if you could bring Shoppet all the way to Rayquaza and have it use Screech. I think that's Cree happened once. Yeah, but go on. Yeah, Screech basically zeroes your defense. That's that's like it like quarters it or something. And yeah, a boss with high defense, it basically deletes the defense that so you will deal massive damage immediately. Unfortunate that the whole way turned like that, so you had to fight it anyway, despite the shop it already trying to get Oh, shop it. Okay, now it's actually stuck. So you can see it was trying to A attack there, but of course it's not too Wait, not stop. too fast to see on screen. But if it happened on screen, it would do like A attack and eventually screech, and then it would do like 50 damage per A attack, so it would not be that bad to have it kill enemies off screen. I don't... Mm -hmm. I still know if this is actually worth it in this game because like the setup takes time and like it's very luck dependent on how much use you get out of it. Like also because this game has so much lower text than Sky, you get this situation sometimes where the enemies have some sort of like status move that they're just spamming for no reason next to shop at there and it's gonna just slow you down. But then, on the other hand, sometimes you can avoid an entire monster house with it, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like ah. there's quite the high skill ceiling to actually knowing all the interactions and the angles how to approach this. Yeah, I rarely get shop it, like anyways, so I'm not too familiar. It is just fun to do, though. Yeah, it's not too common to recruit it. Ooh, okay, this well, is... this is a mistake going in there. Yeah. Shopper, can you... Um, it chose the path. Uh, it, it would have been convenient if it actually walked inside the wall here. Yeah. This is one situation where having the worst scarf would help, because... Uh, oh, like, for sure. You would just, you would just teleport somewhere Shopper. else. No, our boy is gone. Ah. Unfortunate. Served as well. Yeah. yeah, he did walk into the... We got some good demonstration out of it for the marathon, so... 
Yeah, tw 20 floors sounds like a pretty long demonstration. Yeah, we did have extra revives. It may have been worth it to keep it. But like, I want to be safe because we can still get monster houses. We have four floors. Thankfully, with x-ray specs, I may have avoided one. It's hard to tell, but like... There was that one room with three items that I just didn't step into because I couldn't tell whether items, yeah. what kind of items technically, they are. Technically, you can like uh, if you know how many items a floor spawns, you can tell if there if if like all of the items of the floor are in one place, then it's likely not a monster house. They just happen to spawn in there. But if you see like items around the floor and then there's a bunch of extra items in one room, then it's a monster house. Uh, this has to be a hallway, I think. I mean, it is a hallway. Or just like a straight hallway into the, the, the next one. I don't think there's... There might not be a room. I'm gonna go this way. Like, yeah, maybe maybe let's say that it's likelier to be a straight hallway because, uh, I mean, right. again, it can be a straight hallway into a room, but it's not very likely. Usually there's a turn because it would have to randomly choose the same, like, coordinate for both uh, rooms to have the exit uh, at... Uh, so, so, so in that sense, it's a good, like... Uh, Guess do not go there, but it's not guaranteed, I'd say. Unless the room would have had to be in on screen, which I couldn't really tell from that. You can also use x-ray specs to know where the rooms are, since items can only spawn in the room. Yeah, that helps. Okay, the cool moves are still off. I forgot about that, but it worked in favor, in our favor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't really need your partner to do much in this game most of the time. <laughs> Because it's using the dedicated Ouch. traveler, so it's just like following. Wow, well, I rarely see Psy Wave, and we got it twice. Okay, we got some good movement to avoid uh, the line of sight here. Right, so this is the these are the summit floors that we kind of mentioned that right earlier, but uh, floors two, three, five, six, and eight are these ring formations, and they're gonna be really slow. We don't have the chance of uh, extra hallways connecting any of the rooms around the ring, unlike in uh, Mount Thunder. So you just yeah. have to rush back into the hallway and slowly explore this. If you have warp scarf, you can just warp to any of these rooms individually, and then that would be much faster. All yeah. the encounters are like really slow. They take like an extra hit compared to uh, like the rest Ooh, of the game, pretty for? much. Then Aerodactyl has pressure, making it even slower, and like it needs so many hits, it might not even die. Might be a good idea to tail with attracted first. But yeah, we're getting some good mileage out of weight there, getting some ah. of those slow encounters killed off screen. Like this is, for example, really nice to have this Aerodactyl fully killed off screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise it's like 15 seconds of animations. Yeah. The one nice thing about these uh, final uh, stretch is that there are no monster houses. Yeah, we, we got lucky with not getting a monster house horde. In fact, here. in the remake, there are monster houses. Wow. Yeah, but the remake doesn't have these layouts. Yeah, well, the enemies are even worse in that. And, uh, well, you can always tell monster houses, they are very obvious and you never spawn inside them, so it's more generous. The only reason to go into a monster house is like if, if the stairs are there or if it's like an linear path and it's the only way to go through that, which usually doesn't happen. So, yeah. Yo, good, good summit this at least summit so far. So far yeah. Nah, they're both coming this way. Can you All right. <laughs> Thankfully, they both came this way. Otherwise, I would have gone right and risked it again and then got an unlucky both times. But yeah, with X-ray specs, I can see like where the enemies are and then just go the other way here. Still not as good as Warp Scarf, where you can just teleport away and not have to fight anything at all. Yeah, Warp Scarf is so good because, because again, the big issue is that you lose a lot of time, uh, go, or, or a, rather a lot of turns going through these uh, hallways, so you have to fight a lot of the encounters. Uh, also, uh, since there are no uh, other hallways exiting the rooms, the enemies will always turn back one tile into the room. So when you warp into the room, you will never have like enemies right there next to you unless they happen to be in the one turn that they check the room. Ah, okay, there it oh, is. So that just makes Warp Scarf highly efficient on these floors in particular. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. So there's uh, one nice thing about a lot of things. All right. One well, nice thing about extra specs is you can see if there's an enemy just outside your uh, where you'd be coming out of, and you can try and wait a few extra turns to see if they're gonna turn and go like forward in another hallway. So you mm -hmm. might have a chance at dodging that mm -hmm. encounter. All right, it's time for the final boss. I do need Wait, to put my power back another, back. Which is another attract fight. <laughs> yep. This is probably the least... Uh, actually, Gates might uh, share the uh, podium with this, but least like climactic final boss in BMD. Like, yeah, at least, at least inside the speedrun. Yeah. Of course, this boss itself can kill you if it gets a turn. It's got a like, dragon dance, probably can one-shot you, but... Yeah, Dragon Dance is another one of those rooms that has one tile AI range, so it will never use it if you just attract it. Yeah. A lot of misses, so it might survive. Yeah, but we don't even care since we have some new guys. And Cynical still had to go. GG. Right. Not time have, yet, not, but... That's not where time ends. There's another over five minutes of cutscenes left, but that's basically last significant input. From here on out, it's just holding me. Yep. Nope. We used to have marathon timing end in the final boss, but we don't really do that anymore. We usually want to show the <laughs> uh, cutscenes because uh, there's like uh, the whole ending sequence, which these games are kind of famous yeah. for. And well, you technically it would be have a shame to, hold... to just <laughs> that. Yeah, you technically have to hold B here. So I think. That's yeah, why. yeah. You, you do have to. You do have to hold B, but it's not like consistent among speedruns. Like we changed the end timing in our series to, at some point to just end before the credits, like at the final boss, like. Mm. Really yeah, there's the, the brain meatball or I. <laughs> yeah, that is. I guess. Kind of like that. I can see it. So is this this or surgery or something? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we weaken Rayquaza and then tell it to, you know, try to blow this up where if only Rayquaza had listened to us before fighting us. If only Rayquaza had looked up. Yeah, that too. <laughs> so how much did we lose to the first quiz attempt, I guess? Maybe uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty uh, accurate what... to the real plan then we got. Yeah. I feel like this run was a little slow when we didn't get double chestnut, but like we spent yeah, so much time checking extra shops for safety. Yeah, it was definitely a yeah. bit of a safe run, but at least uh, we succeeded in that quite well with all these revives. Less yeah, not having over. to use any backup saves or anything, I think, is already quite a victory because this game can mm -hmm. be pretty brutal on that front. Yeah, yeah, this mm -hmm. game is not easy to finish if it wants you not to finish. Like, of course, you can get an easy-to-finish run where you just get a ton of revives and you never die, but you can also get an absolutely brutal run. Oh, this this part coming up is quite sad. Yeah, this is why we need to keep the uh, ending included in the timing. Exactly. Yeah, I remember Cheese was saying that he's gotten numb to these ending or this ending from speedrunning this but i feel like for me i haven't yet i still get sad anytime every time i see it yeah i mean i i definitely get the getting numb numb parts it's but it's still <laughs> a good, good ending you, you're not gonna get the same feeling you get when you play the game first time but yeah yeah i definitely cried here as a kid <laughs> i think i remember the car ride home when I got to this part as well. Mm. I probably couldn't read English when I first beat this game, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it was still sad, though. You know, the yeah. music is sad and everything. Gardevoir told, told, just told us that our job is done here. We can kind of figure out stuff, even if he can't read. Mm -hmm. I remember trying to beat this game as a kid was like, do you get a monster house in Sky Tower? If so, you reset. So you were burn young as a speedrunner, basically. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah. Mm. I always get sad seeing a Cyndaquil sad. 
Yeah, I think when I played Explorers of Sky was around when I actually learned to read English like quite well. So I at least could experience that like pretty much fully. Mm-hmm. It was like 2010, 2011, I forget exactly. Couple years after release anyway. Mm-hmm. Here's the final final cutscene. I actually I guess we saw the little orb thing. But yeah, I feel like this game is very, very easy to pick up. I feel like Swift and I picked it up very quickly. Yeah, for sure. This is this is an absolute uh, advantage of this as a speed game is that if you know how to play this game casually, even if you don't, you can learn how to play it, and then then after that, the speed run is just that, but you go fast. Yeah, it's like uh, you can you can do you literally do your first run just like having the route up on the side and just reading the notes and executing it, and then as far as the actual gameplay goes. Uh, like the, the general if you look at the finer details i guess there's like differences but generally speaking you're going to apply very similar strategies across every dungeon so mm-hmm. you don't you don't have to like sit there and like learn at each individual section uh, to perfection until you perfect the coming up order. soon by yeah the way. on the fade to white here that's gonna be what time is after perhaps you will meet again right I just start hearing like the music, and then that's when I realize that's when I realize I have to go back. Oh, here it comes, and time. Two forty-nine. <laughs> not great, but you know what? Not bad for a marathon. It's at two forty-eight in reality, but yeah. Oh, true, true. Because we had one quiz reset. But yeah, um, if you want to see more of this, um, I am doing unrestricted runs, but I stream like almost every every day or every other day um if you want to see wonder mail stuff my co-hosts uh spd wolf and shady have been doing a lot of pokemon yep. sky yeah wonder i've been mail working runs. on my on my uh, speed run mode as well i just fixed a uh, really annoying bug that only happens on hardware and you do a very specific <laughs> mistake on a name prompt so yeah that's cool that i got that out of the way <laughs> but yeah oh i guess someone put it in in chat but yeah there's a link to the discord if you want to check that out as well do we have it in chat? Yeah, it's it's one of those in that. Yeah, thing. side game is side one. Game one. The Ooh, dungeon. yeah, mystery dungeon. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, click that. <laughs> yeah, there you can get all your questions answered. Yeah, we are. Very Everyone's happy to help. super helpful Any, there. somebody joins, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like these these guys are speedy and shady. It's like helped me. I only started speedrunning this game in February, I think. Right. Yeah. Or maybe March. Some some sometime around there. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's all I have. <laughs> yeah. If you guys have anything else you guys want to add? Uh, run this game, please, or any PMD game. Love would yeah. not forget. This run is this the game. shortest. Play so. Shiren. <laughs> Shiren's also good. If you want, if you if you like this type of game, definitely check out Shiren. Yeah, it's a lot you, harder. If, yeah, if you want, if you want more challenge, then you can try Shiren. But uh, yeah, otherwise these games are great. Also, words of the developers, if they see that Sheeran sells well, then maybe they can make a better sell to the Pokemon company or whatever higher-ups they have to respond to to make a new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. This is true. Also, the reception to the Red Rescue team that's getting released on uh, NSO is, uh, was quite uh, positive. So, uh, hopefully they are getting uh, the word across that people want more PMD. <laughs> oh, we, we filled up enough time so we can get to see the last... The last final oh, yeah, scene. yeah, there is a small post credit cutscene. Yeah, I guess we can go all the way to the in game time then. Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, on the topic of in game time, this game, uh, we have the leaderboard split between platforms, between Wii U Virtual Console, um, original hardware, and um, this new emulator because, um, both in game time as, uh, as uh, sorry, both loading times as well as like the lag inside dungeons are different and it's like pretty much impossible to convert the time between those platforms but the good thing about the in-game time is that it pauses upon both lag and loading so you can actually use it to compare against against platforms that way 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a very accurate, accurate load removal built straight into the game. It's a bit of a shame that we don't use it on the leaderboard, but I mean, there's some issues such as like same and resetting not being allowed if you if you use IGT. But uh, yeah, right. that's something we like to use a lot for comparing the results of races, mm -hmm. though, and that's like that one of the cool. main features. <laughs> That's one of the main features I put in the Sky Speedrun mod, which like allows you to always see it as a timer on your screen, like a live timer. You can also like it's interesting to see how it pauses during loading and such. Mm -hmm. So we'll just check the in-game time and then we'll call it here. Yep. Okay, two forty-five. So a little off from our um, actual RTA timer. Yeah. But at least this you can compare with other runs. But yeah, thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, SPD and Shady. Yeah, thank you for having yeah, me. Thank you. Good run. Yep.